This conference will now be recorded. All right, I guess that's my cue. Good morning, everybody on the board. How y'all doing today? Morning. All right. Um, we will go ahead and um, start with the call to order. If you can go ahead and do the call to order, Beverly. Yes, sir. Thank you, Vice Chairman Jones. Dr. O'Halloran. Here. Vice Chairman Jones. I'm present. Mr. Cody. Here. I saw. Okay. Mr. Emerson. Hey, I'm here, y'all. Good morning, Mr. Leggett. Mm -mm. I know he was trying to dial in. Okay. Um, Mr. Lukakis is on his way. Dr. Robinson. Present. Miss Stone. Present. Miss O'Dell. Here, here, is it on? Thank here. Thank you. Vice Chairman Jones, you have a call. All right. Um, prior to going any further in the agenda, I did want to make an announcement that our, um, our chairman, Michael, our former chairman, Michael Holleran, had resigned from his position as of last night. And so I will be standing in the gate of the meeting. Um, and then toward the end of the meeting, we'll have a discussion in new business as far as of a new chairman. With that being said, um, our next point of, of the agenda is going to be an inspirational message coming from Mr. Jacob. And let's give this young man our undivided attention, please. Everybody, if you can, mute your mics um, so we can give him our undivided attention. And Jacob, that's your cue to go ahead and unmute yourself or ask somebody to unmute you for you. Um, yeah, um, Vice Chairman uh, Jones, before you um, go to Jacob, can I go ahead and uh, do a little introduction? A prepared oh, introduction by, okay. by far by far that's kind of, that's cool all right that's thank cool. you good thank you very much uh mr vice chairman our acting chairman uh good morning everyone we have a very special something very special for you today um for our inspirational message uh instead of just one speaker we have two young people with us who are winners of our first poetry in motion contest uh held for area students we're very excited about that um as some of you may be aware the system development uh, team launched our Poetry in Motion marketing campaign in conjunction with April being designated as National Poetry Month. Um, of course, everything went smoothly. Uh, that was just, no, I'm kidding. That was just a little joke. Uh, we had to adapt to many challenges that COVID-19 brought to our community. And unfortunately, uh, this campaign was placed on hold temporarily. But now, since many businesses, including ours, are reopening uh, back up, uh, it's time for us to move forward uh, with the last and most exciting phase of the campaign. Recognizing our winners publicly, uh, hearing their original poems for the first time at our board meeting today. So, uh, our staff received 153 entries from 18 public and private schools in Chatham County. We have uh, a lot of talented young people in our community. The winner of the middle school category is Jacob Salazar. Uh, Jacob is a student at uh, Georgetown K through eight. He loves baseball and he uh, and wrote the poem when spring comes. Uh, I'd like to invite Jacob now to read his poem. And also Jake, Jacob has with him a good looking trophy that we uh, we've delivered to his home. So Jacob, if you could if you could uh, show your trophy and then you have the floor, young man, to read your poem. All right, Mr. Jacob, you can go and mute yourself and go ahead and, and um, show your picture. Hey, Mr. Jacob, where'd you go? Ty, could you, um, Ty, we hear you're typing. Could you go ahead and mute yourself, please? Mr. Chairman, Dietrich Leggett is uh, in attendance. Appreciate it, Dietrich. Um, Beverly, can you note date tap for the record, please? And the young man just disappeared, y'all. Well, what we can what we can, can do if you like. Person? I'm sorry. Can we go to the second person? Yes. Um, is is Miss Jayla Lawton on the call? Do we know Beverly? I don't see her. 
Well, a little background on Jayla. She's our high school category winner. She graduated this year as a senior at Woodville Tompkins High School. Uh, she's already a, pro a prolific writer at such a young age. Uh, she has a bright future in front of her. Um, we also delivered a trophy to her home as well. Um, I don't know if she's on the call, but uh, her award-winning poem is called Fruit Basket. Jayla, are you on the call? Jacob, Jacob just came back. I see Jacob just came back. Great. He All right. must have lost his connection. Oh, there we go. Okay, Jacob, it's on you. If you're ready, would you go ahead and read your poem? Could everybody yes. go ahead and mute themselves so we don't have any background noise, please? Mike? Okay. When, when spring comes, when spring comes, joy feels there. As I know, baseball time is near. I get a new bat and a new glove because my parents give all the love. I play a short shortstop because I'm not that tall, but my height doesn't make a difference when I hit the ball. Y'all can take your things off mute so we can hear the clap. That was wonderful, Jacob. That was a great one. Hey, Jacob, can you show us the trophy we sent you? Excellent. Good job, young man. Excellent. Good release. Beverly is showing photos and um, our other candidate, Jayla, who is a high school senior, uh, we must have lost her connection as well. But there's a slide up. We're very, very proud of these students. Way to go, Georgetown. I'm not a Georgetown <laughs> monk anymore. And, and Ms. Patricia, did you want to read off Ms. Jayla's poem? Um, I can, if you'd like, and, and these poems, everyone, will be displayed in our buses. We're printing interior bus cards, and so we'll put the poems in our buses. We'll keep them there, at least through the end of the calendar year, since uh, we weren't able to get them installed in April during National Poetry Month. Uh, fruit basket. Oh, just a second, Patricia, before you read, everybody, I'm getting a loud background noise from somebody. Thank you. Okay, um, fruit basket. Uh, the praline holds a place in gift baskets, accompanied by strange fruits from every ghetto garden, like raspberries from backyard ditch, uh, ditches in scooper nogs near tidal creeks, four leaf clovers pinpoint dates when Ogeechee could roam free. Food deserts are filled with corner stores built off west side stores and yeast. So you call our red lime peaches a delicacy, a tourist attraction, or another River Street sweet. All right. But yes, uh, we, we, uh, we did practice um, everyone, you know, with the students for this virtual meeting. We were hoping to avoid glitches. And so everything went per per uh, perfect at our practice session. Um, but evidently we had connection problems, but we're very, very proud of the response from the schools for this exciting program, our first Poetry in Motion here in Chatham County. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. All right, with that being stated, we've um, had our inspirational message. We'll go ahead into our business at hand. Um, approval of minutes. We have three sets of minutes that need to be approved. Uh, the first board of director regular meeting from May 26, 2020 at 10 a.m. Um, do we have any uh, readiness with that set of minutes from anybody on the board? <laughs> any unreadiness? All right, if I haven't any, um, can I get a motion to approve? So moved. By Helen Stone, can I get a second? Second. Has been seconded by Dietrich Leggett. Call for the question. Um, um, those that are in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. Aye. And, and Beverly, aye. can you do a, a roll call for that, please? Go. 
in the background. That every time I come, you hear all the music, y'all. I'm trying to clear out the background noise now. Okay, all, all our extended callers are muted. The only ones that are not muted are our board members. I, I see that. Okay. All right, can we go ahead and do a roll call for the vote? Yes, sir, acting chair. Um, Jones, acting chair. And, 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 for the record, and for the record, so we don't have to say this over and over again, just call me Jay Jones. I don't want to get acting chair and all that stuff. I'm not into all that title stuff. Just say Jay Jones. Yes, sir. Director Jones. Yes, sir. Uh, um, I'm for it. I, I didn't. Who was that? We are approving the minutes. You asked me, yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Cody, thank you. Aye. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Leggett? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Lukakis? Yeah. We are approving the minutes, Mr. Lukakis? Yes. Yes, okay. Dr. Robinson? Aye. Ms. Stone? Yes. Ms. O'Dell? Yes. Thank you. All right, thank you. Jones, we have a quorum. I appreciate it. Well, Unanimous. we don't have a quorum. We voted yes on that. Unanimous, yes. All right. The other two minutes, I'm going to go ahead because they're both special meetings. Read it at read it together unless we have a uh, any kind of issues. So the board of directors special meeting June 2nd, 2020 at 9:30, and the board of directors meeting um, special meeting June 8th, 2020 at 10 o'clock. Are there any unreadiness to either one of those special call meetings? All right. Without hearing any, if we don't have any unreadiness, can I get a, uh, a motion to approve? I'll move. Seconded. Second. Dr. Robinson motioned it and Helen Stone seconded it. All right. Um, any any um, unreadiness to it? If not hearing any, um, can we do a roll call to accept both of those special call meeting minutes, please? Yes, sir. Director Jones? I say aye. Um, Dr. Dr. O'Halloran? Yes. Mr. Cody? Yes. Mr. Amister? No. Yes. Mr. Leggett? Yes. Mr. Lukakis? Yes. Dr. Robinson? Aye. Ms. Stone? Yes. Ms. O'Dell? Yes. Thank you. Unanimous Director Jones. Thank you. Um, could we could put our phones on mute, please, y'all? Uh, someone's got a TV on going on in the meeting. One of us as board members has a TV on in the meeting. Thank you. Um, with that being stated, the next item on the bit, uh, next item on the agenda is us moving forward into a public hearing. Uh, now we are moving into a public hearing session. Leave. Beverly, could you go through and mute everybody who is unmuted, please? Yes, Thank you. Um, now, now we're moving into a public hearing session for the agenda. I, James J. Jones, uh, Vice Chair, Acting Chair for the CAT Board of Directors, I come to you today to share a CAT's out ongoing commitment to fiscal responsibility and to review the proposed fiscal 2021 operating capital budget. Due to the state of emergency declared by the governor of Georgia, public health concerns created by the COVID-19 pandemic uh, and the safety and well-being of our community, this budget hearing is being held virtually. The CAT board, when making the final decision on the proposed budget, will consider comments received today along with comments made by email and voicemail. Individuals wishing to provide written comments during the hearing may post their comments using the option of the GoToMeeting chat box 
by emailing your comments to meeting at catchacat.org or by U.S. mail to Chatham Area Transit Cat at 900 East Gwinnett Street. Attention of the Board of Members. Person, de person desiring to provide oral comments about the proposed operating and capital budget may call by leaving a voicemail at 912-629-3948 or during the meeting once the phone line is open for public comment. Physical copies of the proposed budget will be available for review at the CAT Central office. Please call first and an appointment time when but will be given and an appointment time will be given for pickup. You may also view the proposed agenda by visiting our website at catchacat.org under the transparency page. At this time, I would like to recognize uh, Terry Harris, CAT CFO for presentation and the, the second reading of the proposed FYI 2020 operating and capital budget. Ms. Harris has the floor. Ms. Harrison has the floor, I'm sorry. Good morning, everyone. Beverly, do you need me to share my screen with the PowerPoint or are we gonna split the screen? Yes, ma'am, I'm turning you over to be the presenter right now. Okay, you are now the presenter, Ms. Terry. So the screen is showing, right, Beverly? The screen is showing. All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, we have the second reading and public hearing for our FY 2021 proposed budget. A quick overview of the budget calendar revised shows that we are at the second to last item, which is the... Um, Second reading, public meeting, and request for approval, with the next action being the Chatham County Board setting our millage rate for tax year 2021. Our budget assumptions have remained the same throughout this four month process. We're not requesting a millage increase. We um, have actual tax digest growth of 5.96%. This was confirmed by the County D Tax Digest. Our service levels are remaining stable at 181,500 hours. We're proposing wage increases up to 3%. Fixed route in para or by union contract and administrative will be by merit up to 3%. Inflation factors from 2.3 to 12.8 as listed. With the most recent change, our blended rate for health insurance and dental at 11.2%. The CEO is proposed and recommending an operating budget with revenues equal to expenditures for a total of 27,628,906. With adjustments for the increase in the tax digest to actual, we have made some allocations under benefits, training and wages, and we're left with a potential operating contingency increase of $69,032 for revenues over expenditures equal to zero. The capital budget revenues are expected to be $20,823,243 with expenditures related to depreciation of 6.9. And if the capital projects move through as planned, there will be a 13.9 million dollar increase in our bottom line based on capital grant revenue. The second reading adjustments, as I mentioned before, we were able to get the actual tax digest and run those fair market, market values through our model, which increased our anticipated tax receipts by 392,000. We also know at this point 
that the plan is to run fare free through July. So we reduced fares by one month for fixed route and one month for paratransit. With the remaining budget dollars, we increased wage and benefits, travel and training, marketing outreach at the request of the board, and the fixed route benefits uniform account in order to allow operators to carry over unused amounts from this year into next year. So the net adjustment was a $201,000 increase in expenses. And that's the summary of the budget. And I can turn the floor back over to Commissioner Jones for public comment. All right, thank you, um, um, Ms. Harrison. Uh, do we have anybody um, for public comment as far as Beverly is concerned prior to going to the board com com uh, comments? Director Jones, I do not see anything at our Catch a Cat um, email address at meeting at Catch a Cat. And I can open the floor for comments if you're ready at this time, sir. All right, we don't have any. Um, Nothing on the email trail, nothing on phone call. Can you open up the floor, please? Yes, sir. I'm getting ready to unmute everyone. If you do have a public comment regarding the proposed budget, please speak at that time. I do. I just have a question. Was that Ms. Stone? Yes. yes it, okay. Um, I have a quick question on the um, pay increases. Um, in the event that the COVID has a bigger effect on the budget, are we going to have to readdress this or is this already a given? I mean, I'm very concerned um, as going forward with the COVID problem as to how this is going to affect us long, you know, to get through this next budget year. Ms. Harrison, do you want to answer that or do you want me to answer it? Yes, sir, I, I can respond. I, I think the, the short-term plan is to watch very closely through July and August and September. Mm -hmm. We had discussed in previous workshops a quarterly budget amendment as the unknowns from the pandemic environment become known. So um, there is a mechanism whereby the budget can be amended as frequently as the board wishes. So the strategy was to budget for known revenues, budget at a service level that was stable, and for staff and the board to watch actual results as the summer and fall progress and make any adjustments necessary when the unknown situations become known. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Stone, did that answer your question? Yes, it did. Thank you. All right. Does anybody else have it? Because I'm reserving my comment until um, I guess when it becomes an action item. Um, Board members, we also understand that this will become an action item later on in the agenda. If it's something we want to make a discussion on, that would be a better place for us to be able to pull it, make an amendment to it, or if we want to make any changes to the budget. This time was really reserved for the public to make sure the public can have its comments, whatever case may be. And, and that was a valid comment that was brought up for, but we want to make sure we give the public an opportunity to be able to speak at this time. All right. All right. Uh, uh, Beverly, I'm going to ask you one more time so we can go ahead and close out for the records. This will be the third time I ask. It will be the final time I request. Um, are there any other comments as far as this public session is concerned? And everyone is unmuted at this time. Thank you for calling Chatham Area Transit or CAT, where it is our pleasure to connect you with the people and. Okay. We have any other comments? That's it, Director Jones. All right. With that being said, without any public comments being out there, this 
I call this second hearing to be adjourned and we go back into regular session as far as our meeting is concerned. All right. And so the point of order. Yes, sir. I tie. Uh, don't we have to amend the agenda to allow for election of a new board chair? I'm waiting to hear this one. Because we've already discussed this at the beginning of the meeting. Um, that we don't have to amend the agenda. The minute you terminate your position as far as being the chair is concerned, I automatically assume the position is being the chair. And we have already stated at the beginning of this meeting that we will have address this in the new business if need be. So you can call Ty and ask Ty. And, and I just read the Robert Rules book. Um, so I mean so, did I, I, uh, so Ty, if am I right or wrong? That was not mentioned during the time that the recording was being done. I waited till after the recording came on and made sure I mentioned it. I know when I mentioned it. Ty? Please call Ty. He's on the call. Please, I know. He is on the call. Mr. Butler? He's not muted. Mr. Butler? Because right now, what you're doing is you're holding up the meeting. Uh, you've done that enough, Jay, so don't even go there <laughs> with your grandstanding. Uh, enjoy, enjoy Anybody? your time. Thanks to partners Mr. Mr. Savannah and with the dot. I'm here. Proudly offers a completely okay, free so system of transit. I have you been calling 16 now. District. Okay. We've got some sort of Bell's ferry to public a, announcement going on from CAT. With the Dot Express shuttle. Yes, sir. I'm going to mute it now. I, I, I'm going to mute it. Did you hear the question, Ty? Mr. Butler, are you there? Because we believe everyone deserves access to public Mr. Butler? education. CAT provides a door-to-door -door mobility service for eligible persons with disabilities. To learn about eligibility. I am here. Those of our paratransit program. I, I asked for a point of order to see, on our website to see if we needed to amend the agenda to have an election of a new chair. Beverly. Yes, sir. Beverly. Yes, sir. I'm I'm, I'm getting a, a cat public address yeah, announcement from somewhere that I can't hear anything but a cat and hub. I'm trying to identify you as the caller so I can mute the other centers, callers. As well as major hospitals and schools and more. Use our caller one is or caller well, a lot of callers are still on. Along The convers the Ty's line is tied to that, Beverly. So every time you unmute him, his line is tied to that somehow. Mr. Butler, what about now? Yeah. I'm still getting I'm still getting a recording. Not sure whether of, you're riding the bike or the bus. Choose both. Everyone else is on mute right now, Mr. Butler. Bike okay. Bike. Well, I'll try to talk over it then. Uh, as to the question that was raised, I was prepared to address that at the beginning of the meeting, but with the announcement that Mr. Jones made, it's acceptable to to reserve it for new business. I appreciate it, Ty. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Now we're going to continue on um, to the presentation at hand. We have guest sir, um, Sterling Seacrest is going to do a property and casualty insurance pre uh, presentation. Uh, we're going to turn the floor over to them. We apologize for the delay, but y'all have the um y'all have the mic right now. Thank you. Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Erica Franklin, the director of safety training and environmental services. Um, I was going to do a quick introduction for the ladies of Sterling Seacrest Partners and give you a brief overview of our our board report. Um, so this morning we have for you a, a report proposal and a presentation regarding our um, upcoming commercialized insurance renewal. All of these items are obviously to inform everyone of the renewal of our commercialized insurance, including property, general liability, our business automobile, workers' compensation, public officials' liability, um, employment practices' liability, crime and privacy and security liability. 
Um, and we're presenting all these things today to seek the board approval to bind coverage. Um, these, uh, all of these lines are currently approaching their renewal date, and we have received renewal premiums from our insurance brokers, uh, Sterling Seacrest Partners. We have another line of insurance, which is the Hull and Protection and Indemnity, which is the Marine Services Insurance Program that expire in August, and that will be provided in a separate presentation um, and agenda item next month or possibly August. Um, so we do have Sterling Seacrest Partners on the line now to go through the presentation. Um, we have Ms. Cindy Robinette and Ms. Jenny Osako, and they will give you an in-depth overview of our renewal quotes and the state of the mar current insurance market. And I'll turn it over now to them, and they will take some questions at the end of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Erica, for that introduction. Um, speaking, this is Cindy Robinette, and my associate, Jenny Asako, is um, in, on the call with us. Uh, we are both partners at Sterling Seacrest Partners, and we appreciate the opportunity to meet with you this morning and go through the 2020 property and casualty insurance renewal. As Erica mentioned, we're going to start with an overview of the property and casualty market to give you a backdrop of what we're experiencing and then we'll go directly into the renewal um, premiums for Chatham Area Transit and follow that by some details with each program. And then again, we'll take questions at the end. Um, as I overview the commercial um, insurance market, for the past year and a half has really been in a state of correction, if you will, um, characterized by rising premiums virtually for all lines of coverage largely due to increasing claims and litigation costs um, that have um, occurred over the last decade during a time where the market was actually declining and premiums were going down. So we were really seeing the market correct itself. And at the end of 2019, the property casualty industry was pretty stable and well capitalized um, with surplus and excess of $847 billion. Um, so we were looking um, favorably into 2020, and all that was before COVID hit. So um, with COVID um, and the resulting economic downturn, this has had a profound effect on the global property and casualty insurance market. For the first quarter of 2020, commercial property and casualty rates increased about 9.3% on average. This is according to the Council of Insurance Agents and Brokers. Um, projections for the second quarter and thereafter um, are even higher based on global insurance uh, company feedback. So we're in a treacherous time in the property casualty market. Um, and again, you know, that a, a, the COVID um, is certainly having an impact on the decline. What we're seeing beyond rising prices are many insurance companies are limiting their capacity or the limits that they're offering um, to write um, insurance. And then some carriers have um, put moratoriums on new business and are declining to write new business altogether, and then others are restricting coverage. So we're really in a um, a difficult cycle to say it's um, a challenging market would be an understatement. And again, you know, the impact of COVID on the insurance market includes the negative impact on their investment portfolios, um, strain on cash flow as insurance regulators have mandated that insurance companies, at least for the last 60 to 90 days, um, accept late premium can payments and don't cancel policies. And then the, where the overall industry is facing decreasing premium volume with downturns in revenues and, and payroll and exposures. And then certainly there's the um, concern of increased litigation costs with coverage disputes over COVID-related losses. So we are in a challenging um, market. Just really quickly um, by line of coverage, property is really um, one of the steepest um, rate increases we're seeing catastrophe exposed properties, such as where we sit in Savannah with our hurricane exposure, we're seeing rate increases in the neighborhood of 30% or more um, across the board. So that's hitting businesses in our community. On the casualty side, um, seeing significant loss deterioration 
from nuclear verdicts, we call them, very, very large verdicts. In fact, Georgia is one of the top six worst states um, from a um, civil litigation standpoint. So underwriters are seeing uh, spikes in claim activity. They're also still fearful of COVID litigation. Uh, management liability, and that would include public officials, errors and missions, and also employment-related practices. Um, the market is also seeing increases. Um, underwriters are concerned with um, uh, litigation um, for discrimination, um, unfair um, treatment, uh, and other allegations that are um, largely COVID-related, but also um, spikes recently in sexual harassment claims. These are particular to the overall market, not necessarily to CAC. The one potentially bright spot in the market is workers' compensation. Rates are stable um, at the, the present time, um, largely impacted by medical management, pharmacy management, robust safety and education. So that is one area where we see some stability. Um, this next um, slide um, demonstrates the um, countrywide, countrywide overall um, projected 2020 rate increases from the Council Insurance Agents of Brokers um, compared with what we've seen on Chatham Area Transit's renewal as far as the actual increases. So the first category would be in the property catastrophe exposed where I mentioned rate increases of 30% or more. Um, CAT did get a rate increase. We don't like any rate increases. <laughs> Uh, but 12.5% um, um, is somewhat better than what we're seeing in the overall market. As far as general liability, um, very little movement in the general liability premium for CAPS renewal, even though the market is up. Um, there was some slight bump because we include employee benefit liability coverage in that um, exposure, and there were some increases in staffing, but very, very small change there. As far as umbrella or excess, um, that market is really hit because of a large um, verdict. CAT um, does not purchase umbrella coverage. CAT purchases the primary limit of a million uh, across the board, so we do not have an impact um, from, from the changes going on in the umbrella marketplace. As far as workers' compensation, again, that's relatively stable and overall plus or minus 2%. Ours is, um, from a rate standpoint, is fairly stable. The driver rate um, increased for about 4%, but the rate for garage employees decreased 5%, somewhat of an offset. Now, when we get to that line of coverage on the premium side, the premium is up, but that's uh, it's impacted by other factors and not just the insurance carrier's rate, and we'll talk to that in a moment. Uh, commercial auto um, rates up generally 6 to 12%. Tax renewal rate increase came in at 5.5%. Uh, management employment practices liability, that may jump off the page for you because um, CAT is at the top end of what we're seeing in the market. It's um, coming in at 46.5%. We will suggest that that is largely because the pricing was very, very competitive going into this renewal. There is some open claim activity, but largely um, this is market driven. Um, when we get to the quotes, the next best quote that um, we received on the management public officials employment practice liability was three times higher than the renewal, um, the renewal program that we're presenting. So um, from a dollar standpoint, that one is not as impactful as some of the others. And then no change in the cyber privacy and security liability. So from a premium standpoint, um, this slide on the left-hand side is the expiring premium, and on the right middle is the July 1, 2020 to the 2021 renewal. So you'll see for the most part, um, pricing is relatively similar to expiring um, with the rate increases and changes we discussed. And so you get to the public officials, and again, that is um, up slightly uh, or, or quite a bit from expiring, but not as big a dollar amount as some of the other programs. Um, the workers' compensation is also may jump off the page. We had a 20% a increase in payroll that was projected last year at this time versus on the renewal, 
And that's really where we're seeing a large part of the premium increase. And then we also had a change in the experience modification factor. That is a factor that's promulgated by the National Council of Compensation Insurers um, based on historical claim experience. And the experience mod went from 0.9 to 1.09, largely because of one year of some adverse claim development activity. And that factor is applied against your um, uh, standard premium. So there is some uplift or bump because of the historical claims experience. We'll um, get to that a little further when we get to the workers' compensation slide. Um, so in all total, um, based on the programs we're rec recommending, you've got about a 10.3 overall premium increase. Again, a large part of that is exposure related with the increase in payroll. Um, because of the jump in the work comp um, premium, the program that Chatham Area Transit is on right now is fully insured. There's no deductible. So the, the premium is the premium regardless of how the losses turn out. We did seek and, um, and receive an alternative um, approach where the large deductible, which is something CAT has been on in the past, um, where CAT would pay the first 250000 of each claim subject to an overall aggregate deductible of $575,000. Um, the premium um, total um, for that program would come in under expiring at a million four zero two one seventy eight. However, that would not include the expected claims within a large deductible. Based on a six-year average, we anticipate um, deductible claims just under three hundred thousand at two eighty nine six zero seven. So that takes us back um, within about thirty three thousand of where um, the cost certain program would be for the twenty twenty renewal. And we'll walk through this again when we get to the workers' compensation slide. Um, so an overview just of the program briefly. Um, the property um, is with um, AXIS and RSUI. We had to split the program this year because AXIS would not write the full 20.3 million. They're writing the first 10 and RSUI is writing above that for a total of 20.3 million um, per occurrence with five million in flood and five million in earthquake and a million in business interruption with a 5% deductible, oh, excuse me, a $5,000 deductible with the exception of hurricane or named storm, which is a 1% um, of the, uh, the damages and then um, 100,000 flood deductible and 25,000 for earthquake um, wind, which is not a named storm such as a tornado or hail. Um, general liability, a million per occurrence, a million aggregate with a $25,000 deductible. That's with RLI, who also writes the auto. Um, auto also has a, a $1 million liability um, limit. Um, we also have physical damage coverage for specified perils as well as um, collision. Um, the collision coverage only applies to certain autos, 2018 or newer. Um, and then there are various deductibles. The liability on the auto has a $25,000 deductible and a 10,000 physical damage deductible other than private passenger auto. Um, workers' compensation, um, again, fully insured with Eastern Alliance. Um, that's the program we're recommending. We do have the optional deductible program for consideration. Public officials, legal liability with Chubb. $2 million limit per claim, $2 million aggregate, and then um, privacy and security liability for breach of privacy, um, cyber extortion, um, network intrusion, et cetera, on um, the $5 million limit, um, including privacy um, notification, monitoring, response, et cetera, with a $10,000 deductible. And then we have um, a crime program with travelers with a million dollar limit for employee theft, for forgery, alteration, et cetera. So just going through a couple of the um, programs on the property, um, we talked about the limits, the sublimits. What you'll see here are the various markets that we approached. All of these markets are surplus lines insurance carriers, meaning that they um, are 
they are approved to write business in Georgia, but they're not admitted. So they're not subject to um, Georgia insolvency laws. There are no admitted carriers that will um, would agree to um, provide terms because of the catastrophe exposure, the hurricane exposure, and the docks that we're covering. And you'll notice that a number of the insurers declined to offer terms because um, of the dock exposure, which we do have covered under the program. But they're all um, highly rated insurers, and again, access and RSUI are very highly rated. Um, the next is the um, commercial autos. Um, again, we went to a, a number of markets for, for quotes. The market um, remains constricted because there are not a, a ton of insurance carriers that are willing to write public transportation risk. Um, RLI was the incumbent carrier and they did offer the best terms and pricing and did not, you know, make any specific changes um, to the program. I will say that the um, electric buses that will be coming in in the fall are not included in this pricing and those will be added and they have the capacity to write those buses as well. Um, but would likely have to get up some additional reinsurance. Okay. Um, this slide is a little bit busy, but in a nutshell, it will show you to the three columns on the 2019 unit rate and estimated premium, and then um, the comparative 2020. So you'll just notice that we are down a few units and the rates are up five and a half percent. So you'll see the premium is, is up a bit, but we did have the offset of a couple of units being, being down. Um, as far as the physical damage, um, the values, the exposure values, you, you see 15.9 million last year, 14.3 this year. Um, that's just a change in the values for the physical damage that we are insuring. So total auto premium um, this year, 1,039,282 as compared to expiring at 1,026,272. No changes in the deductible. Uh, workers' compensation, um, again, this is with Eastern Alliance, but um, change, the, the major change is the increase in payroll, um, projected payroll from 10.9 million to 13.4 million. Um, on the far right is the optional large deductible program, which again would require the 250,000 per claim deductible. You'll notice the fixed premium for the deductible is just under 200,000. Um, versus the fixed premium for the guaranteed cost renewal program from Eastern Alliance, which is 523000 That 523 would not change other than perhaps the payroll audit, no matter what the claim experience is. Under the Amerisher program, based on projected costs, we're estimating, or projected claims costs, we're estimating total annual cost at 489000 but as we all know, claims can deviate from expected. Uh, there is a maximum cost under that program of 832000 So it has a wide range of variability, and the, um, six, the estimated costs are not that much different from the fully insured price. So um, that's where we're recommending um, staying with Eastern Alliance for the fully insured program. Um, just a couple of observations on the workers' compensation. Um, you'll see in this chart, in the blue are total paid claims, and the red are reserved. Reserves are amounts um, uh, established to pay additional costs, medical, lost time claims, and expenses. Um, you'll notice all claims are closed from um, 2007-1-18 behind, which is great. So we really only have seven open claims um, in the 18-19-19-20 year. Um, but we do we did see some adverse development in that 18-19 year. So that's causing our experience mod to go up a bit and impacting our premium for renewal to some degree. However, of the we did a review of the I'll turn to this slide of the large losses, losses over 15,000. And um, uh, you'll see a, those in red are those that are caused by um, vehicle accidents where cat driver was not at fault. So there's, and to a large extent, a number of these, there's nothing that CAT can do to prevent these um, other than, you know, continuing safe driving. But those are some of the cases that um, have been um, uh, paid out of reserve where CAT was not at fault. 
all in all, cat, oops, there we go. Cat's um, historical work comp um, claim experience has been very favorable. On average, about 20 claims um, per year, and again, only seven open claims. So, although the 17, 18, 19 year looks a little higher, um, uh, the overall experience is, is, is favorable. So with that, um, that would end my presentation, and um, I would be happy to take any questions. All right, thank you all for the presentation. Um, are there any questions from the floor? Are there any questions from the floor? All right, I did have I did have one question. Um, I saw that you you stated if you go back two slides you stated that the red um, red meant that um, that slide right there is fine the red meant that we were not at fault but we still incurred um, expenses can you give me a little bit more leverage to why we still incur expenses yes because um, your employee was injured on the bus so under workers compensation it's regardless of fault they are able to be taken care of under workers compensation statutes so. Um, while another, um, there may be an opportunity for the insurance carrier to subrogate and go against the driver of the opposing vehicle, but many times we find that those drivers don't always carry the necessary insurance, so we can't make, that we can't always go back and recover those dollars. So at the end of the day, the employee who's injured does get taken care of their medical expenses and their lost wage wages through workers' compensation insurance. And who would make that determination if we went after them? That would be the insurance carrier. Um, they um, get all the information on the accident. And if there is another driver involved that has insurance coverage, they take action to subrogate against that other insurance company to recover those dollars. And, and my next question, my last question would be, do we, does it benefit us to go after those other entities? Um, I guess, I guess as far as, um, our annual rates of concern, whether it increases or decreases? I would say yes, because it reduces the um, loss that goes into your loss experience because those subrogation dollars are considered. Now, it will more directly, would more directly impact you all if you had a large deductible program, because you'd actually get those dollars back to offset your deductible. When it's a fully insured program, it really just goes to your experience in reducing what's paid out on your behalf. So it has less of a direct impact. Okay. All right. I don't have any other questions. Any other board members have any questions? Hey, y'all. I got a question. Um, and uh, I'd be interested in learning more about this as we further invest in electric vehicles. But can you tell me about any differences in how those are insured and also the equipment, the charging equipment that we'll be installing to make them go. Thank you. Um, sure. Did, was your, your first question was about the electric buses. You cut out for a moment. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we will have those buses. We'll have RLI, who is the auto carrier, um, give us pricing to cover those buses for comprehensive and collisions. They've already given us um, an indication um, of the cost to insure the buses, which um, roughly are close to $20,000 per bus because of the high value. I understand they're each at about a million one. Um, so we, you know, we'll be adding those buses to the um, program when they're brought online. Um, the charging stations would be insured under the property inland marine policy. Um, and once we're waiting on some specific details, we'll provide that information about the charging stations to the underwriters, and they'll come back to us with pricing under that program. But those costs are not currently included in what we're presenting to you today. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Clint, did she answer your question, sir? All right. Anybody else got any other questions out there? Any other questions out there? Going twice. Going twice. All right. Okay. 
Uh, we appreciate Seacrest for the presentation. Um, I think that we have this item. Do we have it on the? Yeah, we have this item. We'll be um, voting on. Hopefully, if we have any extended questions, extenuating uh, questions, um, we'll move forward into that. Appreciate y'all once again for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you, Erica. All right. You're welcome. Um, with that, we're moving into our action items, and our first action item is property and casualty insurance renewal. Um, um, I don't know if it's going to be Michael Beverly who's going to read the narrative in, involving that. Yeah, I, I will read it, uh, Commissioner Jones. So the issue is to inform the board of upcoming renewal of CAT's commercial lines of insurance, including property, general liability, business automobile, workers' compensation, and uh, public officials' liability crime and uh, private and security liability and to seek board approval uh, to bind coverage. Um, the organization's current insurance coverage of multiple lines and programs is approaching this renewal date. Uh, CAT has received renewal premiums from our insurance broker, which you just heard, Sterling Creek Seacrest Partners, uh, the Hull of the Protection and Indemnity Marine Services programs expire on August 20th. 2020 and renewal quotation quotation will be provided as soon as possible. So that was not included. Um, Cast commercial auto um, renewal with RLI is generating a rate increase of about 5.5%, which you just heard, you just saw. Uh, it's better. It's, it's better than the average uh, when compared to typical rate increases in today's market. The property renewal rates up about five and a half percent, which seems high, but it's, uh, the average market is 20 to 30 percent. And the overall re renewal premium is on only up 2% due to changes in property value. Um, so uh, with that. Um, Mike, can you hold your second mic? Can call yeah. in the, can you go ahead and um, mute call a 20 for me, please, Beverly? Go ahead, Mike, I'm sorry. Uh, the financial impact, the cost associated is included in the FY operating budget. Uh, board, uh, the recommendation is for board to approve uh, provide approval to bind the coverage for uh, with staff recommendation recommended insurers. Um, staff recommendation on workers' compensation program is to bind coverage with incumbent insurer Eastern Alliance Insurance uh, with the fixed premium option to avoid unknown large deductible costs. Thank you. All right. Um, I, do we have a motion to approve? I'll make yep. the motion. All right, it's been, it's been motioned by um, Commissioner Stone. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second. And it's been seconded by Commissioner O'Dell. It's been motioned by Commissioner Stone and second by Commissioner O'Dell. Um, are you waiting for the question? Is there any unreadiness? Any, any com this, um, conversation to the motion? Can I ask a question at this time, Commissioner All right. Dr. Robinson, you have the floor. I only have one question. I, I need a clarity on the automobile section where they're they're only insuring automobiles 2018 and old and younger. What happens to vehicles that are younger? Do we have vehicles that's older than 2018 that's not that's not insured? All right, is Cindy still on the call? If you want Mike to answer the call, I think Cindy's still on the call. Can you answer that call, Ms. Cindy? Hey, I'm here. This is Erica. I believe Ms. Oh, Erica, Cindy. I'm sorry. Up. Sorry, I was trying to unmute myself and it wasn't working for some reason. So that, uh, Dr. Robinson, that's correct. Um, on the older vehicles, we, we have liability on all of our vehicles covered. However, on some of the older vehicles, due to depreciation, we may not cover uh, physical damage on those. So um, we sort of self-retain some of those costs because the deductible itself would be $10,000. Um, so, and, and it's assumed that if a cat has a very bad accident, uh, our operator has a very bad accident based on our previous claims experience, those accidents are usually not at the fault of cat. So the other party would be paying for the damages. Anything under that, we retain those costs. This helps us to fully insure our newer vehicles. Um, so that's why we don't carry physical damage coverage on the older vehicles. 
um, we base it on the depreciation. And also if a vehicle is totaled, um, and in commercial lines insurance, you only typically insure things to a certain amount. If vehicle is totaled, they're only going to pay us the salvage value. So that helps us with all these nice, this nice new equipment we're getting in. It helps us to fully insure those to make sure we're covered for any damages on those vehicles. I hope that helps answer the question. Everybody put their mic on mute, please. I got that draft coming back real bad. Did that answer your question, Dr. Robinson? All right, thank you. Are there any other questions, any other readiness? All right, we've had a motion put on the floor. Can you go ahead and do um a vote, Beverly, please? Yes, sir. Director Jones? Can, can you reserve me to be the last vote? Yes, yes, sir. Sure. Dr. O'Halloran? Yes. Mr. Cody? Yes. Mr. Emerson? Yes. Mr. Leggett? Yes. Mr. Lakakis? Yes. Dr. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Stone? Yes. Ms. O'Dell? Yes. And Commissioner Jones? I go with it, yes. Thank you. Unanimous, sir. Thank you. Motion is approved. Can we go ahead to the second item, um, Mr. Brown? Uh, yes, sir, Commissioner Jones. The second item, action item, is to request board approval well, oh, one month second. extension of the emergency measures implemented. Oh, just uh, a second, Mr. Brown. Yes. Erica, Erica, could you go ahead and mute, your, mute yourself, please? Ms. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Brown. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, to request a board approval of one month extension to the emergency measures implemented to respond to the COVID, uh, co coronavirus, COVID-19 uh, state of emergency declaration. Um, we're currently running uh, a pretty much a normal schedule during the week for the exception of uh, the 14, the 27, and the 25 coming in a little earlier. Um, some businesses have opened, but some businesses have remained closed. Um, and ridership dictates that uh, those runs uh, at, at the current time would um, come in a little earlier. We, although we've shown an in, increase in ridership, we are still about 60% uh, lower than what we would normally be at this time during the year. So we feel that the, the current ridership levels is appropriate for the uh, the ridership we're seeing. Uh, we will continue to to monitor uh, the ridership as we as we have through this uh, pandemic and uh, make adjustments as needed. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Mike. Uh, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Brown, uh, uh, are we a open for a motion on this, please? Are we open to a motion on this? Move to approve. Right, it's second. Been moved by, it's been moved to approve by uh, Mr. Clinton and second by Commissioner Stone. Um, are there any questions on readiness to this motion? I have, I have a question. Uh, the floor is turned over to Dr. Robinson. I'm sorry, the one month extension. Can I have specific dates? What are we talking about from today? I didn't know what the, the, I didn't know the time period for that extension. Traditionally, it's from meeting to meeting. So it will be our next board meeting when this um, extension will be brought back up. So um, it will be to our next board meeting. Beverly, can you tell us when the next board meeting is? It's the, the fourth day of, of July. Or July, July the 28th. So July 28th will be the next meeting where this thing, this measure will be a, uh, will be brought back up, whether we extend it or not. Okay. Now, I think in our governor's meeting, if I'm not correct, we talked about extending this, but with the new CEO coming on, 
there would be some adjustments made. And am, am I did I understand that correctly? Uh, it it would be the next item that's on the agenda that we will be talking about that we were talking about in the governance meeting, which you actually give CEO authority. This one just um talked about the extension of the measures with COVID nineteen. Um, what we talked about in our governance meeting was the uh, extension of CEO measure of authority, and that will be the next item we'll vote on. Did I answer your question, Dr. Robinson? You, you muted. Okay. All right. Are there any other questions out there on the floor from any other board members? All right. Go ahead and do the roll call. Um, reserve me to be last, please. Yes, sir. Dr. O'Hellron? Yes. Mr. Cody? Yes. Mr. Ennister? Yes. Mr. Leggett? Yes. Mr. Lakakis? Yes. Dr. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Stone? Yes. Ms. O'Dell? Commissioner Odell. Commissioner Odell. We're what? I'm extension. sorry. Say that again. We're voting oh, on the oh. extension of COVID-19. Yes. Thank, Thank you, Commissioner you. Odell. And Director Jones? I um I guess. Thank you. You have a unanimous vote. Thank you. All right, Michael Brown, moving on to the second point, which is the extension of the CEO measures of authority. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, this issue is to request board approval to extend the authorization for the CEO to implement additional hazard mitigation measures deemed necessary to respond to the uh, Novid uh, coronavirus uh, COVID-19. Um, this is... Uh, Staff recommends the board to extend their authorization for the CEO to implement additional hazard mitigation actions. This would roll over to our new CEO. This is CEO authority, so this uh, would roll over to um, our new CEO, obviously, um, to have the authority to uh, put into place mitigation um, measures deemed necessary. All right. Is that the, the, are you are you finished, Ms. Brown? Yes, sir. All right. So um uh at this point, I'm here to look take um motion for approval. Move to approve. All right, it's been moved to approve by Mr. Clinton. Second. And it's been seconded by Commissioner Stone. Um, are there any questions on readiness to this motion? And, and for clarity, when is Ms. Molden's, uh, uh, Bakara Molden's first date um, in the position? June 29th. June 29th. So that, so that would. Next yes, Monday. Next, so Monday. next Monday. So as of next Monday, the, like, if this motion is approved, Bakari would take ownership of this motion. So um, just to give clarity to that. That's correct. All right, Beverly, go ahead and make the call, please. And you can go, you can start with me this time. Yes, sir. Director Jones? Um, yes. Thank you, Dr. O'Halloran? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Cody? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Emerson? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Leggett? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Lakakis? Yes. Thank you, Dr. Robinson? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Stone? Yes. Thank you, and Ms. O'Dell? Yeah, I think Commissioner Odell has moved away from her phone. Okay. Oh. There she goes. She goes. There she goes. Commissioner Odell, we're voting on the item number three on the action calendar. Yes. Thank you. Unanimous, Director Jones. Thank you. All right. Thank our you. next item. Our next item on the agenda is a uniform vendors contract award. Can you go ahead to the, enlighten us on that, Mr. Brown? Uh, yes, sir. So uh, we request board approval of uh, the award of a three-year uniform provider contract to A1 Uniform Company, Inc., a per catch union agreement. Uh, CAT must provide a uh, siphon for each uh, operator to obtain proper CAT uniform articles. Previously, CAT had used JDX, formerly Patrick Uniforms, 
uh, but the company is going out of business. As such, CAT must seek a new uniform vendor. Uh, in, in accordance with CAT's procurement guidelines and FGA regulations for this type of procurement, CAT staff obtained and attached quotes along with the 2020 pieces for the current uniform order. Uh, the total value of the three-year contract shall not exceed $205,200. That's $205,200, which is the maximum amount CAT will spend based on the contractual per operator stipend that uh, uh, number of possible employees. Uh, CAT staff has selected A1 uniform for this procurement based on its lowest price offer for uh, the lapel uniform shirt preferred by the operators union because A1 has a local retail lo a location that will manage sizing, purchasing, and exchanges. Uh, based on the adequate price competition and overall value to CAT, A1 uniform price was determined to be fair and reasonable. So staff recommends board approve the award of a three-year uniform provider contract to A1 Uniform Company, Inc. in the amount not to exceed $205,200. Thank you. All right. Um, do we have a motion to approve? Move to approve. You have a second. I'll second. second. All right, it's been approved by Mr. Clinton and second by Commissioner Stone. Are there any questions on the floor? And I do have a question, but I want to reserve it until after anybody else has asked any questions. Any questions on the floor? All right. Um, my question, Mike, and I don't have the documents in front of me. Um, when did they go out of business? Oh, boy. Um, I would have to get that to, to get that information to be exact, but I want to say it was around February, January, February. But yeah, I, I have to check to be sure, Commissioner Jones. All right, so they went out of business in February. When did we realize that we weren't able to do, I guess, uniform exchanges or however we do it? Um, let's see. I, I'd have to do some follow-up information or some uh, checking to give you get you that answer. Uh, I don't know exactly uh, when they uh, notified us that they were going out of business and when we were no longer. I know there was a time where we um, asked operators to go in and, and, and get what they could, uh, but then COVID-19 hit and that kind of pushed everything back as well, obviously, for everyone. Um, so, but I, I don't have the answer. Commissioner Jones, I'd have to get you, I'd do some follow-up to get you an exact answer of that, those dates that you asked. All right, the, um, does the CFO, on, does the CFO may have an answer? Terry, does, does Terry have an answer? Terry, do you have any information you could add to Commissioner Jones's question? So, Michael, we were just exposed to the procurement piece. So, I don't remember any discussions with your team or with you about the actual dates. So, Commissioner Jones, my folks only do the processing of the procurement. We don't oversee this process. I, I, I just want to make sure I, we I have No, sir, I'm sorry, I don't. Okay. Um, my next question, did this affect service? Is this affecting service? No, no, it's not affecting service. So the operators have uniforms already. They just need to get to replenish their uniforms as they do annually. All right. And my question to you is, um, as far as they have to be replenished annually, and I'm charging my phone, my, um, my computer up. Um, so we had to replenish, this is something done annually, correct? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that last question. This is something done annually? Yes. Uniforms are, are purchased annually by the operators. Yes, they get a siphon for each year. All right. And were they able to, I mean, as far as a uniform from last year, were they able to keep the compensation piece as far as that's concerned? Yeah, what we did is uh, we we added an amendment into the, uh, the budget um, for the amount of $45,000 because we had um, the, the MOA, the signing of the MOA, they couldn't get uniforms till we signed the MOA, myself and the union. So that was a delay. Then uh, JDX went out of business and then COVID-19 hit. So we had quite a few operators that, that were not able to use their uniform allowance. So um, 
in the in the interest of fairness to the union and to the operators, we allowed a, a one-time uh, carryover for next year. So whoever did not use their uniform allowance will be able to carry it over to 2021. And if that has been addressed in the budget. All right. And then my, my next question is, is this going to change, I guess, uh, the outlook or um, um, with us going to a new organization, is it going to change what our uniforms are going to look like within the organization structure? No, sir. They're going to, their uniforms are going to be consistent to what the, the uniforms that we currently have. Okay. All right. Well, Mr. Jones, I have a question. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Dr. Robson. Um, the, the contract we're approving today is a three year contract. My question is with packet uniform, when they went out of business in February, were they still within the contract year or had we finished the contract with them and did we overpay them in any way? Uh, okay, on the, on the contract, Chair, you might have to uh, help me on the answer as, as far as JDX and the, the contract situation with them. Uh, I know there wasn't, okay. a, there wasn't any overpayment, but you can you address that, please? So the, the way they bill is by purchase. So every month we get a bill from them for actual operator uniform purchases. So there, there's not a possibility of overpaying them. They bill us after the fact. But were, were they still, when they went out of business, was this also a three year contract? No, ma'am. This was a year over year vendor choice that um, started. I really don't know the start date. So it wasn't like they terminated a contract with us. They have been providing our uniforms. And once they were no longer able to provide, they sent a final bill that was processed through the normal procedures. So there wouldn't have been a, we don't pay them a monthly amount. We pay them per purchase. And, and we decided to do three years this time because? The standard contracting, we usually do a three-year contract with two one-year options. But for this one, we just wrote it very standard, three-year contract not to exceed 205, which runs about $70,000 a year. Oh, the actual amount will vary depending on the purchases. Each, each operator goes into the place of business, selects their uniforms up to their stipend, and it will vary. It won't be exactly 205, 200. But the, but the fact that we are we're putting in an extra forty five thousand dollars would that not reduce the the two thousand five by forty five thousand from the carryover? It'll actually increase each oper each operator's stipend next year if they have unused stipends this year. It will roll over and add to their FY twenty one. So next year, we may spend more than the 70 based on what portion of this year the operator takes advantage of in next fiscal year due to the rollover. So instead of 70, the most it will be next year is the 70 plus 45. But it will vary depending on the actual unused balances and the actual activity of each operator. All right, um, I, I do have one more question. I don't see anybody else's hand tied to what Dr. Robinson just said. So you're saying the three-year contract is a standard contract with one-year renewals after the first year, correct? That's how we usually contract with our vendors, our, our professional vendors. For this one, we don't, we ha don't have it written for the extra options. It's just a standard three-year contract. And my, so my question to you is, did we get a reduction, I guess, in, did we get a reduction as, I guess, the cost is concerned, so we, with the three-year contract or not? Is the, is the, is the value the same if we went with a one-year contract? The value is an estimate based on number of employees and annual stipend. The 205-200 is an internal estimate of the most we will spend. So it's not like we contracted with this vendor for two hundred and five thousand two hundred dollars. So, so the contract. 
So let, let me get it clear. The contract can be amended to a one-year contract, um, and then we put it out for RFP again next year. Yes, we can do that now, or we can do that at any time during the physical year next year. The quote I, I, shows. I would much, I would much prefer. I would much yeah. prefer to amend it down to a one-year contract because this is a this is an emergency procurement in my. I know that may not be the standard language for it, but in my case, this is emergency procurement because I'm trying to make sure we take care of a physical business um, in a short matter, and then we take it up where we can really put it out to bid next year. So the, the quotes came in at a per uniform price. Okay. A ones was right at $565. So then staff took the number of operators on our roster times their contractual stipend times three years to come up with the two out five. The quote is per uniform, $564.90. Okay, and so. On the presentation, what, I'm sorry, Commissioner, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, Dr. Robinson. According to the presentation, A, A1, A1, was A1 was the lowest price offer. Is that, I thought that's what I heard. Out of the, out of the ones who did bid, A1 came at the lowest. Is that right? Yes. That is correct. My 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 thing is because it's because it's such short notice on the procurement, I would have much preferred a one year and then maybe next year after we've done one year worth of service, then make the option to go to a three year commitment. Um on the strength of it being, I guess they just went out of business in February, March, and now in June, we're getting ready to give somebody a three year contract. Uh, and and I don't know what a one I don't know a one service could be the great they, they could be the greatest service in the world, but to give them a three year award, we would have to go uh, it, it, to sever that contract. What will it cost us? Nothing. Um, we would just stop using the vendor. We we are allowed to terminate any contract um, without cost, just for the benefit of CAT. So in six months, I so think, I think Ty can speak to it more directly, but we wouldn't be tied into a three year contract. I think that the service delivery staff has been working on this for a few months. And um, regardless of term, their preference was for the A1 uniform company based on the uniforms and, and the operators requests were considered. It, it was a, an operations driven procurement and they wanted to pick the, the best uniform for the operators. And so in six months, if we needed to pull away from this contract, we can sever the ties and, and put it back out for bid. Yes. I have no further questions. Anybody has any questions? But, uh, Mr. Jones, the only comment I would make, my only concern would also be with the inconvenience to our drivers. So I, I think if we can, if we can keep the three year, you know, we know we got a vendor that's got the best price that supports our, our people with the um, ability to pull out any time. I would say, I think it's a pretty good deal. I, I, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing. Well, I'm just making sure that we got, we're taking on a brand new vendor. And six months down the line, if a uniform is bad or whatever case may be, we have any discrete because we're dealing with somebody new. I want to make sure that we can get out of that contract. In one year contract, we can get out of it. In a three year contract, I just want to make Terry's answer my question. In a three year contract, we can sever ties and put it back out for bid. So I'm good to go. All right. Any other questions out there, everybody? All right. Without hearing any questions, um, can you do a roll call and um, you can start with me? Yes, sir. Thank you. Director Jones. Aye. Dr. Dr. O'Halloran? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Cody? Yes. Yes. Mr. Leggett? I think Leggett just said yes. Okay. Thank you. I don't, I don't see him, though. Before I go there, I don't see him. He's on here. I that was cold. That was Cody, okay. Mr. Leggett? I mean, I'm mute. I'm... 
Alderman Leggett, do you hear me? Alderman Leggett. Okay, we're moving forward. Go ahead and go past him. Just make sure that he wasn't he he wasn't on. He was he was muted. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Lacakis. Yes. Dr. Robinson. Yes. Ms. Stone. Yes. Ms. O'Dell. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairman, we have um. Eight votes with uh, Mr. Leggett not being present right now. There you go. Mr. Leggett's here. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Unanimous, sir. All right. Mike, can we move forward to um, support vehicle purchase, please, sir? Yes, sir. So request board approval, um, the purchase of addition, additional support vehicle uh, from the Georgia State contract. Um, before I move on, the scope in your board packet says a white uh, explorer. However, our um, incoming CEO preference is a black explorer. So um, <clears throat> I would like to, um, uh, the, the facts and findings will be a little bit different on the price. I, I don't know the price yet because we have to order it on the state contract and it won't come out, the pricing won't come out to the end of July. Um, so that part of the facts and findings uh, is not going to be accurate. Um, so I just want to get that on, on the record. Um, I, I can't give you an exact price. Um, so I'm, I'm going to skip over that part. Uh, it'll, it'll, I can tell you it'll probably be a little more than the quoted price and the facts and findings. Um, but the vehicle will be purchased utilize, utilizing funds uh, will, that will increase operating Fund depreciation expenses by approximately 7,623 annually. Um, so what we're asking here is if the board approves the purchase of a uh, a black, not a white, a black explorer off the state contract. Um, when the pricing, you know, when it becomes available uh, in July, that that is the request here. That's the All only right. change to the report. All right. Motion for approval. Motion to approve. Okay. Um, DJ, I second um, the motion to approve. Alderman Leckett, and then we have Commissioner Odell. All right, are we, is there any unreadiness or any questions, conversation? I have one. Yes, I sir. do too. It's a question okay. for uh, oh, Terry. How is that uh, vehicle compensated to the CEO? What was that question, sir? And who was it directed to? To Terry. How is the uh, use of the vehicle applied to the CEO benefit package? So, based on current wage law and, and the research we did, there will be an allocation to W-2 wages for any staff assignment of, of vehicle use, so it'll affect this one, and the COO's vehicle assignment. It appears that you have to find an average lease rate per month, and then <coughs> to 12 months worth of that lease as taxable wages to the employee. All right. Um I have a answer? question. I, I got Helen. Uh, Helen. I want to make sure Mike got his question answered. Okay. Mike, did your question get answered? Yes, it did. I just wanted that to be out there. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Stone, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, so if I understand this correctly, the standard color would be white. That's correct. Okay. So she just doesn't want white and it's uh, going and it's going to cost how much more a year? Uh, the preference of our incoming CEO is, is to have a, a, a black uh, vehicle. Um, I can't give you an exact, Commissioner Stone, I can't give you an exact cost difference because it, it's on the state contract. We won't be able to order it to July and we won't know the cost difference until July. Um, but Michael, so is black a standard color? 
Uh, well, there's, there, there are like five standard colors on, on cars. Black, white, brown, or I mean green, or there's five standard colors for buying a car. Where you don't have to pay extra for, for the color. And and that was gonna be my comment. And we keep saying standard. Black black has always been the standard color in corporations. When did it when did it when it has stopped being a standard? I, I don't think I just black, I think black costs more. What's I listed just, what how, listed as the color on the on the because black was one of the colors listed in this thing. Where's the agenda? Right. Yeah, black yeah. was one of the colors on here listed. I mean, I'm still trying to get an idea of the cost, y'all. I mean, I'm not going to approve something if I don't know what the additional cost is going to be. Yeah, that's I, I know, Helen. That's what I'm saying. I don't think there's an additional cost for the color black. It was listed okay. right side white. Yeah, they have they have black, blue, um, silver, iconic silver, magnetic, and Oxford white under colors available. Okay, so why would it cost extra if it's an available color? It's yeah. not a special order color. Design black and tan. Yeah, I'm I'm looking. <coughs> Dr. Robinson, did you have any narratives you want to add to this conversation? My, my only question was about delivery time. Uh, let me see, Steve Boatwright, are you on the are you on the call? Can you give us some enlightening information? Terry, Terry had a hand up. I don't know if Terry had something she wanted to add to the conversation, Mike. I just oh, was okay. exposed. I was exposed to a conversation. The current manager and the director of maintenance who was ordering this vehicle and it's my understanding that this particular vehicle was available because another agency did not get their funding for it so this vehicle was presented because it was immediately available and it was at a discounted price that's what i remember the choice being okay yeah. but i've got a question Commissioner, oh, Commissioner I Odell, I, I misspoke. I, I want to correct my, um, my, I misspoke. I've been told now the black, there's not an extra cost for the black. That's not what I was previously told. So I misspoke. There is not a extra cost for the black vehicle. Now the availability, um, it may be, I don't know, it's, sorry, the one that uh, Terry just spoke of, I believe that one was spoken for, that black explorer. So, um, I, I can get availability as soon as it, I can get Steve to check in on availability, but I don't have that uh, that time frame available right now as but we speak. For this isn't it better to order the car than to take a car off the lot? Because if you order it, don't you get all the government discounts? Correct. Because we buy cars at the county, and if you all buy them off the lot, you don't get all the government discounts. If you order so them, you get all the government discounts. No, we're ordering this off the government contract, so we get the government discounts because it's coming off the the government contract. Right, but but if you take a car that's on the lot, you get less than if you take a car that comes into the lot. Isn't that right? Yes. Is, is that right, Michael? I, I'm not sure, Commissioner Odell. I will double check. Okay, so I, I, don't I don't think that ordering it will be a pro. I don't think that's a problem. I mean, I don't. I don't think that's going to cause us any extra money to do that. And yeah. now that we've cleared up that black is not an extra cost color, I mean, I don't think there's an issue with waiting to get the car in. I mean, if we have to, she can have a car allowance for six weeks or something. Yeah, and, and we have other. Um administrative vehicles here until okay. the vehicle comes in so no that that won't be a problem okay that's great commissioner odell are you still are you cool you good to go yeah it's like we've solved this problem that shouldn't have been a problem i got you dr okay. um dr robinson you you ready to, you good to answer 
All right, Dr. Uh, Commissioner Stone, did we answer your question? You still got some reservations? No, I just wanted was worried about the additional cost. All right. Uh, which was a great, which was which was a valid question. All right. So I with have a question. Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead, Mr. O'Halloran. Dr. O'Halloran. Yeah, what was Dr. O'Halloran? Thank you. Uh, what was the price that was crossed out on the bottom? I can't read that. I'm sorry, could you repeat that question? Yeah, what what's the price that they crossed out on the bottom? So on the quote, Steve, the, the question is, what is the price they crossed out? Because the price, it looks like they had it at 33.18, and they crossed it out and it says 34.93. It's a $225 increase for delivery. So, what did the order is that of uh, Atlanta? is three hundred dollars their delivery is seventy five dollars that's the difference in the price okay this just what clinton said is difference of the price on the delivery so what's that i can't what is the total that's on there the total on this one is thirty thousand four ninety three okay so they're actually giving it to us for twenty one hundred dollars less even with the extra delivery fee? Oh, no. There is a, a reason to take it as it is, but if that's not what you want. I don't, it's $2,100 difference. Are you, are you finished your question, Dr. Holleron? Yep. Thank you. Um, any other further questions from anybody, any other board member? If not hearing none, um, could you please um, do the roll call and, 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 and make sure I'm last? Okay. Dr. Halloran? Yes. Mr. Cody? Yes. Mr. Emerson? Yes. Mr. Leggett? Yes. Mr. Lakakis? Yes. Dr. Robinson? You hit mute you hit mute before you said yes, Dr. Robinson. I'm sorry, Ms. Dumas, yes. Thank you. Ms. Stone? Yes. Ms. O'Dell? Yes. And Director Jones? Yes. Unanimous, sir. All right. I appreciate us taking the time to go ahead and be delivered as far as our conversation with that item. I think that was an item that was discussed prior to our meeting. And I'm glad everybody got their questions out. And we go ahead and move to the last item as far as action is concerned, the FY 2021 budget adoption and recommendation for the millage. Michael Brown, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman, the Vice Chairman. Uh, to request board approval for the FY 2021 budget and the request to the uh, Chatham County Board of Commissioners to set the FY 2021 millage rate. Each fiscal year uh, presents CAT budget to the board for approval each each year staff presents um let me start over each this fiscal year staff presents cats budget to the board for approval cats 2021 fiscal year begins july 1st 2020 and ends june 30th 2021 uh, staff is presenting an operating budget of 27 million six hundred and twenty eight thousand nine hundred and six dollars an increase of four hundred and $97,622 from FY20. The capital budget program of projects totals $1,823,243. Um, and after depreciation, we'll provide $13.9 million increase in net assets for the fiscal year. The, request, the requested revenues to expenditures resulted in a balanced budget 
uh, once the operating contingency is taken into consideration. Um, let's see. Um, the facts and findings, the passenger fares, and special district taxes comprise about 54% of the budgeted operating revenue um, and totals about uh, 14.9 million. Uh, overall revenues are projected to increase by about 497,622 when comparing FY2020 budget to FY21. Uh, let's see. Our revenue generated from CAT special district tax is projected to increase by 1.1 million. Uh, it's one million one hundred sixty-nine thousand eight hundred and seven dollars when compared to FY20 total receipts. Uh, this increase is estimated based on an actual 5.69 percent growth in the county tax digest. Uh, let's see. I will just. So the recommendation is for uh, FY 2020 proposed budget results in a balanced budget of the, like I said, 27 million 628906 after adjustment for the operating contingency. CAT's fiscal year 2021 budget increased again, I'll say 497,622 compared to the uh, a budget of 27 million 131 284 for fiscal year 2020. Staff recommends the board adopt. FY21 budget as presented and request the Chatham, the, uh, Chatham County Board of Commissioners set a transit district, district millage at 1.15. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Brown. Um, I do want, before I call for the vote, to put out something that um, uh, Commissioner O'Dell did some research on to just be clarity for our conversation. It was a couple of emails that went back and forth within the board. And um, part of that conversation was what would happen if we did not adopt the millage? If we did, I'm mean, sorry, if we did not adopt the budget today and we got conversation, if we did not adopt the budget today, CAT would revert back to the county and we would have to, um, we would have to go through different set of measures. So prior to me calling for the question on it, I want to make sure that if there was any unreadiness to the budget prior to calling the question on it, this would be a good time because what we have to do is once we call a question, we have to come out of the question and have that conversation. So were there any items that we felt did not get put into the budget or are addressed in the budget prior to me calling the question? Um, I know we had issues as far as dealing with um, making sure that, I, I forget, um, our outreach was an issue. Um, I know for a fact I had an issue in reference to, uh, it was never addressed in any kind of conversation in, re in reference to some kind of audit or some kind of comp um, some kind of comprehensive review of the organization that I would would like um, presented, and, and there was a couple other items, but I just want to make sure this is the time we need to address it because once we call the question, we're voting on it, and we can discuss it then. But then we got to come out of discussion, we got to revert from out of discussion to discuss that. And so, do we have any unreadiness? And what I will do is I will call every board member to find out if we have any readiness because once we put this to motion, it is set in stone. And so I will start with Dr. O'Halloran since he's already unmuted. Do you have any questions, Dr. O'Halloran? Yeah, I have a question for Ty on what it means for us to go back to the county. And that and that answer and in and, and to clarify what I said, that answer was given to us by the attorney from the county. So Ty, please answer his question, sir. Yes, I can give you some clarification and background. Um, there's been some statements that this, that uh, the, the presentation and approval of the budget and then the, the going to the county and the county approving a millage and approving the budget was a, required by state law. That's not exactly correct. What it, it is required by an intergovernmental agreement between CAT and Chatham County that goes back to January the 9th, 1987, that's been uh, renewed every year. And what that uh, what that uh, intergovernmental uh, intergovernmental agreement uh, provides is that if the the county does not approve the cat budget and set a millage by June the thirtieth, then the the intergovernmental agreement for transit services and for the levy collection and and uh, and um, remittance 
of the of the special district uh, transit tax, the, auto, the, the intergovernmental agreement automatically uh, terminates by its own terms, which which would mean that as of July the first, if it's not if the county has not approved the cat budget and set the millage by June the thirtieth, then on July the first, cat would stop providing transit service and the county would would, would uh, terminate the special district levy and collection of the special district transit tax. And I had a conversation yesterday, the, the county attorney called me and after I had provided him with a copy of the intergovernmental agreement and, and had explained the circumstances and explained the provisions of the intergovernmental agreement, his suggestion uh, was, was in concurrence with my recommendation, which I also understand was recommendation of several other interested parties, including Linda Kramer and CAT CFO and uh, several other several board members, or at least one board member. Uh, that recommendation and the suggestion of the county attorney is approve the budget, um, uh, pass it on to the county. So the county, on I believe their meeting is on the 26th or 27th. Uh, 26th. The, the, 26, the, so that they can approve CAT's budget and set the millage rate. And then if there's any necessity for review of it, either because of uh, COVID-19 developments or because uh, the new CEO would like to familiarize herself with the budget and weigh in and uh, have her own input, that at the end of the first quarter, uh, the, the um, you could go back and amend the budget. So that's, that's where this all is. But again, it's it's a matter of the intergovernmental agreement providing if you, if there's not if the county does not approve CAT's budget and set the millage by June the 30th, then the then intergovernmental agreement that goes back to 1987 would automatically terminate by its by its own terms, and uh, that would that would mean they would stop levying and collecting the special transit district tax, and CAT would stop service. All right. So um, everybody heard the explanation? Thank you, Ty. That's what I wanted to hear. It does, but it does not negate that we cannot make any changes or amendments to the budget within the budget structure. I want to make sure that's clear. We never said that. We always had the right to amend any budget. That's part of our option as a board. That conversation is for everybody. And so with that being stated, um, I wanted to make sure that um, it was two or three items I recall that were brought up. I know one was, like I stated earlier, was your outreach, was the outreach as far as outreach concerned. And, and I'm asking for board members to be weighing in on this. This is not a time to be silent. Um, did we look to see that the adjustments for the outreach was covered? So we're feeling comfortable with what was covered as far as outreach was concerned. Yes, Ms. Terry. Commissioner Jones, I was just gonna confirm that the increase requested by the board during the workshop was added to the outreach budget. It totals 15,000 now instead of the nine. Okay, so the $6,000 adjustment, would that cover what we need as far as outreach was concerned? Uh, all right. I'm, I'm saying it so so it's for the record that we asked the question. Um, was it any other items outside of um I asked I asked for the comprehensive operation analysis to be taken care of and I didn't ask for nothing but the money that was put in the um finance department the extra $82,000 was put in the finance department to be put into I guess the executive directors um or CEOs budget so she can go out there and do a comprehensive operation analysis. All I was doing was taking one pot of money from one location and put it in another location so she can have that. That money I asked, asked for was money that the CEO added to the planning budget. And so she only requested a certain amount and he added $82,000 to that amount. And so I was requesting that $82,000 be pulled from that since she only requested a certain amount and be used for a comprehensive operation analysis study. Um, in order for that to happen, I need a um, first and a second 
and a motion to make amendment to the budget for that to happen. I move for the amendment. A second. I second it. And I see Terry has a question. And Ms. Terry, go ahead. So there is $232,000 in consulting fees in the budget. It has not been let, it has not been bid, and it can surely be allocated to this project. So I'm not sure an amendment to allocate that would be necessary, but there is that 232 that the board can direct any consulting or assessment analysis that they would like. It hadn't been contracted. Ms. Harris, I don't want to allocate the 232. I think I think that if you look at the budget as far as the CEO is concerned, it was like 300 and something. I don't have it in front of me. What I'm taking is that extra $82,000 from your 232, that extra 82,000 to be allocated somewhere else. That the CEO put extra in your budget. Actually, it was a reduction, but we can move 82,000 from the planning department's fees for the system redesign and TDP to the executive department for this assessment. Okay, appreciate it. And can we make sure we can we make sure we earmark that as comprehensive operational analysis? CEO. Jay, do you know where I can find more information on the COA? Uh, just yeah, I mean, just type in COA. I did. I've got one from um, Links, which is in Florida, and it seems to, um, I mean, be fairly comprehensive in terms of running times, departures, transfer times, um, removal of minimally used bus stops, consolidation of stops, consolidation of routes, vehicle types. Uh, capital needs, improvements, staffing recommendations, and phasing. So I'm actually totally in favor of that. It sounds cool. All right. Um, Commissioner, do we still need the um, motion to amend? Uh, um, as long as the language is in the, as long as the language is written in when we approve this budget, I don't think we have to have the amendment. But Ty, that's a Ty question. Ty, so we we're moving. If I understand what if I understand what's happening and what what has been proposed, I agree with Commissioner Jones. Well, as long as she puts the language in there that the, the COA at eighty two thousand under the executive, um, uh, I guess the CEO's budget would be would be fine. Yes, sir. I can do that. Um, we have made last minute adjustments based on input from the board during the second reading in okay. prior years. I'm going to remove it from Department 20 and add it to Department 10 with the explanation that it be used in program for a comprehensive operational analysis. All right. I appreciate that. So should I withdraw? Yes, go yeah. ahead. You, you, man, you may withdraw. Okay, I'll withdraw the motion. And who seconded? Tab seconded? Mr. Leggett. Yeah. You, you, uh, oh, Lig, I'm sorry. Leggett, you second it. Can you withdraw your um um second, please, sir? I withdraw my second. All right, appreciate it. All right, so do we have any further discussion when it comes to the FY 2021 budget adoption and recommendation as far as millage is concerned? Commissioner Jones, I don't know if this is the place to ask this question, but yes, an increase based on the county tax digest. It, what is the probability that you guys meet that this goes away? It was what now? It says the increase was based on the, on the county tax digest. Correct. We had an increase in the digest. We had an increase in the digest over the last year. And that a whole? That's 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 solid. I mean, we. I mean, you you typically in this kind of market, you're going to have an increase. I don't foresee our market having an increase in the digest anytime soon, but. I don't know what at what percentage rate is going to actually increase next year on. Um, but we just know for now we have a 5.9% increase right now. But it could affect our budget in some way if, if it goes. I think right now the only thing that really can affect our budget is if people don't pay their taxes. I mean, uh, outside of that, the digest said this says that we have we're a growing community. We're a community that's growing, we're building houses, we're building industry, we're building properties within our community structure. 
So I don't foresee us losing on the tax digest. I, I foresee it growing. Hopefully, it'll be keep growing. But you can't predict that. You can't. You can't make that market known. But I do see that we have a growth in our digest. Thank you. No problem. Do we have a motion on the floor yet? Uh, yeah, we're getting ready to put a motion on the floor right now. All right, I have discussion when the motion's made. That is okay. Um, at this time, are we are, are we already put? At this time, I'm asked. I'm entertaining a motion of the FY 2021 budget adoption and recommendation millage, with those said items that were discussed here in this meeting, to move move forward with. Do I have a, a first and a second? I move. Right, it's been moved by second. Dr. Robinson. Second. And been second. second by Dietrich Cody. And the floor is open for question and discussion. Mr. Holleran, you have the Dr. Holleran, you have the floor. Yeah, a couple of questions for Terry, actually. Uh, wasn't a lot of that work on the comprehensive um, the COA done by Jared Walker in preparation for the route redesign? I would offer that there are two different engagements with two different objectives. Some of the work will be similar. The analysis of our routes, the analysis of our service delivery, the, the outreach to our public and our stakeholders, any comprehensive operational analysis will have those same steps. It'll be similar, but for a different purpose and a different final report. Where the other's purpose was to redesign our service delivery, a comprehensive operational assessment will give us tools and recommendations for every part of our organization, not just the service footprint. And in my in my humble opinion, it will allow the CEO an opportunity to get a preview of our organization at our own at our own pace. Agreed. Okay, my second question then, Terry, how much uh, is that going to delay a TDP? since they've been asking and we already had a 12 to 18 month time frame? So for the staff to do it internally, it will take longer, but we will do our very best to harness a, a collaboration across departments and get it done within the 12 to 18 month time frame, whether we have consulting help or not. Okay, and last, um, I think I remember when we were in discussions that this new budget based on the millage that we were given, I don't know, six months ago, we had to do five between five and 10% decreases department-wide throughout the organization. So if we were, I think it, the, the conversation was in our workshop. If we made estimates and adjusted our budget now for COVID-19 and what we think is gonna happen, we would be talking about a permanent service reduction. And, and the fare free piece for a year, I think was right at 2.2 million. And from what we did a few years ago, that equates to eight to 10% of our service. And if we reduced our service eight to 10% per 1.5 to 2 million in revenue, it would require a 10 to 15% across the board cut in staffing levels, yes, sir. Okay, one last question. Do we know when the city is going to restore the uh, shuttle service since we're losing revenues from that as well? They, we are losing the revenues, but we're not incurring the cost because we're not running the service. So right now it will lower the total revenue, total expense, but it's still neutral as far as budget. The only exception being an operator that may be on the extra board or earn a guarantee because they used to run the shuttle and now they don't have a 40 hour run, but the city shuttle is not the only example of that right now. The current conversation, we don't have a definite start date, but we're encouraged because they're requesting additional service. So we're not hearing anything to indicate that they're not going to start the service again. Um, it's to the positive, they want to add three miles at the same 10 minute headways. So we hadn't got a date, but the planning department and Sean Brandon and his team at the city are, are discussing it weekly. All right, 
Yeah. Mike, can you finish your questioning? Yes, thanks, Terry. All right, Ms. Harrison, um, two things I want to uh, piggyback so we can make sure we have clarity on this um, on this discussion. The TDP, who's responsible for the TDP? It's a comprehensive transit development plan, and it usually rests with the planning department. All right, so that has no responsibility to the CEO, correct? Direct responsibility to the CEO. Well, it would be task overseen, reviewed, and input would be provided by the CEO. But it's but not the CEO's responsibility to do the TDP. Outside of the organizational responsibility that that position holds, no, it's a planning department function usually. All right, and the, my, my second question for clarity is, um, Alderman Diedrich Leggett is on this, uh, on this um, is a board member here with, for, for Chatham Air Transit, and him being a board member here at Chatham Air Transit, he can segue a conversation with regards to what we need to do, because he is one of the voting members over there on the city of Savannah. He can help us get clarity as far as where we stand with us making that extension and getting that revenue sources. So I, I encourage you to get with him as a board member of Chatham Air Transit to make sure that we work that segue piece between us so we can make sure we get this thing done efficiently and effectively as possible. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I sent uh, uh, Beverly an email with the, uh, the current zip codes of all of our covert virus uh, uh, people that we are having. So I, mm -hmm. I think that's something that she need to share with the rest of the board, especially when we're talking about trying to uh, open up or have somebody have all our shuttles to open. Maybe that, that'll hey, help also, but I, I don't have a problem with fostering any uh, conversation with anybody from the, from the city aspect that would help us. All right, um, y'all let me get my screen back, y'all. Thank you, Alderman Leggett. I am in receipt of your email. Now share it with the board. Thank you. All right, and um, Dietrich, we, uh, I, I can tell you this, uh, I know Commissioner Stone, Commissioner Odell and myself also received that from the Department of Public Health. So um, if we could make sure we forward that to her, um, I guess you can be tasked since you don't took on the responsibility of making sure that task is done. Um, but we do, uh, us three get the um, same um, text message, but the state, because we do have a um, um, something on the floor, we did have a second and a third, we did, we did do that, right, Ms. Beverly? We do, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Okay, are there any questions, are there any additional questions to the motion that's on the floor? And I was oh, getting clear to you. Dietrich. Sir? I have a question for Dietrich. You can address you can address the chair and then he can hear the question and I'll make sure he he responds back to me as well. Yes, sir. Yeah, he's on. Is there any idea when the city may or may not mandate wearing masks in public and how that's going to affect us if uh, people get on the bus without them? Dietrich, well, Dietrich, Dietrich, Dietrich. Yes, we're going to do, reserve that answer to new business and old business. That has nothing to do with what we're voting on right now as far as the budget item is concerned. Um, we need to move forward. Any other questions, additional questions dealing with the budget item is what we need to be staying at. Well, that will affect the budget if we're forced to deal with masks and additional barriers for the drivers. If, if the city if the city mandates it, then the city has to take up the ownership as far as the cost is concerned. And so any mandate like that will not be fostered on us and putting us in a predicament where we have to go out there and incur the cost. So it will not affect us, sir. Now, we already are taking on the cost as far as employees are concerned. Uh, Michael Brown, is that correct? We are issuing out to our employees masks or whatever kind of material that we need to be protecting our employees. That is correct. All right. Mask, so, gloves. Okay. So okay. when it comes down to a mandate, the only mandate that would affect us in that conversation is if we do a full out mandate as far as that's concerned, then we would have to have that discussion in reference to whether we allow passengers on or off the bus with or without a mask. And that's a discussion in that, but I don't foresee anything as far as cost is concerned, um, especially with regards to the budget because it was not never mentioned before. So um, let's move forward. Any other additional questions in reference to the budget? 
adoption and recommendation and recommendation of the millage rate. Hearing none, can we get a roll call, please? And you can make me last, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. Dr. O'Halloran? Yes. Mr. Cody? Yes. Mr. Amister? Yes. Mr. Leggett? Yes. Mr. Lakakis? Yes. Dr. Robinson? Yes. Ms. Song? Yes. Ms. O'Dell? Yes. And Vice Chairman Jones. And I agree with it and I approve it, yes. Unanimous, sir. Thank you. And I appreciate all the board members for being um being faithful to this whole process. This budget is very important to us because this budget will set the tone for our new CEO. And we need to make sure we do everything we can, put our put away our differences and support our CEO in whatever whatever direction she chooses to lead this organization. I think we have made a lot of a lot of strides. And I think we got a lot more to come as far as this organization is concerned. And Mike, I am preparing you because we are now out of the action items and we are now into executive director's report. And so the next person I want to hear from is Mr. Brown. I'm waiting on here, brother. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. So um, we recently, have you see in your board packet, we uh, were awarded the FTA a $1.87 million grant, the full amount we requested uh, for the purchase of uh, new electric buses, um, depot chargers, and associated infrastructure. So uh, uh, that is uh, a feather in our cap. Um, to get the full amount. Um, we, we are happy that we got that um, award and um, we just want to, uh, to share that news with the board, obviously, and just uh, kind of uh, just let everybody know how excited we are that we, that we got that, that grant as well, or that, uh, that award. So um, as far as, uh, Excuse me, uh, one minute here. Let me just catch up with my. Uh, as I spoke earlier, um, um, ridership numbers are roughly 60% um, below what it would normally be at this time. As you can see in your board packet, uh, the numbers are significantly down, which would be expected um, with the COVID-19 and the level of service we've been running. Um, let's see, uh, as you well know, we uh, on the ferry service, we uh, were running um we increased ferry service to 7 a.m to 10 p.m um when we increased uh, on on june 15th when we increased our fixed and para span of service as well we're seeing an uptick in the para uh bookings although they're they're down compared to where they normally would be um uh, ferry ridership is 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 pretty steady now that they're opening stuff uh down on the river uh, the hotels uh, the bookings have, have uh increased in the hotels and obviously you know some of the restaurants are opening up so um we're seeing an uptick as far as it goes with our um our ridership on the ferry um we move into our uh on-time performance as you can see that's nowhere near where we, we want to be the number is at 56 percent that was part of what we wanted to address in the route redesign i'm not going to go into that too too much but i just wanted to mention that that we can certainly increase that number uh, if we, once we address some of the issues in our scheduling. And so um, that's a number that we have our eye on that we, we know uh, we need to show improvement on. Paratransit ridership was down about 50, close to 50%, as I had mentioned earlier. Um, you know, everything's down ridership across the board, which again, you may, may expect. Uh, we continue to do well as we have, um, for a while now, as far as our preventable accidents, uh, we, we have a very low number uh, compared to uh, nationally what you see in preventable accidents. So um, I think that that deserves mentioning. Um, even though our numbers were down in pair, we still are maintaining about the same um, passenger per hour number. Um, but as you can see, the uh, on in the fixed route, we've taken quite a hit. Uh, we were on a downward uh trend before COVID-19 and it's just um uh, increased since COVID-19 but um you know we'll we will 
we will keep a close eye on those numbers and see um, the, the goal or the, the the thought is that the ridership will steadily increase, but it won't be something that will come back right away. And as you all well know, there are um, uh, reports of increased uh, COVID-19 cases in our county. So uh, as you heard uh, Alderman Leggett mention, um, we have to take a cautious approach with businesses opening up and um, making sure that we continue to keep everyone safe. The goal from the beginning of this and the decisions made by the leadership team and by myself has always been to keep our, our customers and our passengers, uh, excuse me, our passengers and our employees safe. Uh, that's ad, admin employees, frontline employees, ma maintenance employees, supervisors, everyone. So all decisions were made with that premise to uh, what can we do to make sure we keep everyone safe. As um, Commissioner Jones mentioned, we continue to provide uh, PPEs, that's face coverings, that is hand sanitizer, that is gloves, and we have continued to uh, uh, sanitize the facility and the vehicles uh, in the manner that uh, we have been since this started um, with double bleach, changing the, the mop water bucket sooner, and also spraying the vital oxide in every vehicle every night before it hits the road the next morning. We will continue to do that as we have found that um, in the new norm that that's a, a better way obviously to to sanitize your vehicles also um I, I think we've stumbled onto something that's been pretty successful as well uh we we hold virtual virtual town hall meetings with our employees on wednesdays and uh in all accounts it has been successful because it gives employees a chance to uh, um, uh, share their concerns give us feedback and also gives a management and leadership team a chance to let everyone know what we're doing to continue to to run cats businesses make sure everybody gets paid pay the bills and um uh, administer benefits within hr so um i think that's something that we can we the plan is to continue as we uh, move through the the back end of the COVID 19 we don't know when that's going to be but i think the, the the virtual town halls are something that has really worked for us it gives everyone a platform and one of the best features about it is if someone is uh, has a question and they feel um, they're not quite comfortable sharing that uh, verbally, they can email their question into us. So we we we've been getting a lot of questions. And some are critical and some are complimentary, uh, but overall, I think it it serves a purpose to say it to keep us all connected. So um, that's that's pretty much my report. I'll, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Yeah, Mike, uh, quick question. Before the next board meeting, will all the buses have those shields installed that are protecting the drivers? Uh, that is the goal, Dr. O. Um, I, I can give you an update as we get a little bit closer. I can send an update out to the board. But the goal is to have all the shields in place um, before we start collecting fares again uh, to keep that interaction between the operator and the, and the, and the customer uh, keep the operator safe, keep the customer safe as well. So I can give an update, but the goal is that by the end of July, we would have the, all the barriers in place. Okay, and then follow up to that question, were any drivers unwilling to return to uh, work after the uh, we came back? Um, not only drivers, we've had other employees as well that, that were a little apprehensive about returning to work. Um, we we are dealing on, on a case by case basis for the, for the most of our operators did return to work uh, some uh, did not feel comfortable coming back to work we are not um, imposing any kind of discipline um, we, we've kind of waived that because this obviously is something that no one uh, we've never seen anything like this before we didn't feel like it would be appropriate to you know start um, adhering to a discipline policy when people are afraid for their lives so we've been a little flexible on that and overall it has not it has not affected our ability to put service out on the street any That's other questions I next, Mike. okay and i i kind of morphed the uh executive director's report into the service delivery report so um Chairman, uh, acting chairman, if, uh, that's that's all I have. All right, thank you, sir. Do you have any other questions from any other board members out there? Uh, Commissioner, I just want to commend um, the staff 
for you know the things they've done through this unusual time. And I'm looking at somehow in 2021 and 2022 and have some grand celebration to really show appreciation for the hard work. I don't know where the money's coming from. <laughs> We'll find something. I think that's a, a great idea. I think the uh, the the employees appreciate the fact that that we've shown them appreciation all through the organization for the the work they've done, and uh, we as a leadership team we've tried to um, lead by example and show them that we're all in this together. We listen to their uh, their concerns. We we take their feedback and. Uh, we try to answer all the questions. So I appreciate you saying that, uh, Dr. Robinson, and I think that'd be a good idea. All right, any, any additional questions out there? Um, Mike, I appreciate the report. I know this is your last report as the interim CEO. I do want us to commend you for the job you've done for the last year. Um, we appreciate you, what you have done for us and everything like that. I know it was um, a tall task to step into the gate as far as those shoes are concerned, but you appreciate, we appreciate you taking on that task. As board members, I do, as an acting chair, I do want to say I do appreciate you. And I know that you get to go back into your other office if you want to do whatever you're going to do. Um, um, you do what you do, but man, we do appreciate you being around us. And I know this has been a, a great learning experience for you. And it's something you can add to your resume as far as what you have taken advantage of and, and, and move forward as far as this organization is concerned. You see how I got Dr. Robinson to, um, to cut her screen on? Um, yeah. Because I talked about you, brother. <laughs> um, the other thing I do want to point out back to business side is, is um, our, and I may have missed it because I had to take a phone call, but um, we're not having any issues with regards to getting PPE as far for our operators, making sure our operators are, are safe with gloves, with masks, and everything under the sun. Everything is rolling in. We're stocked very well. We're not having any issues at the current time. We have we have plenty of masks, hand sanitizers, and gloves, uh, and the cleaning supplies are rolling as well. So we have no issues there. Okay. And um, as far as our employment engagement, um, that's what I'm expecting to see. You start Monday morning that employee engagement, that COO position. Let's get back into employee engagement because I think that's something we really, really need to make sure in this COVID-19 experience we're going through. That we're and I know you're already doing it, but now you can get to really do it and take one one shoulder off and put one shoulder on to make sure we push this effort as far as making sure Chattamary Transit is class one within within the United States of America. And so I do appreciate you again, my friend. And and anybody else who wants to speak on that appreciation, please, the floor is yours. I guess I they don't like love you as much as I do, Mike. Yeah, I know. I just like to say to the board, I appreciate being given the opportunity and um uh, like you said it was, it was a, a good chance to to, to uh, gain experience and, and i have to say it did open my eyes to a few things so um i appreciate that the that the, the fact that i was given the opportunity so thank you very much okay thank you we we do a, we do appreciate you mike yes thank we'll you We'll make Thank sure you. to beat you up and rub your head for you. <laughs> Let you know that we care. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Odell. And Commissioner, Jones, Commissioner Jones said it so well. It didn't leave us in the room to say anything else, but we do appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Moving forward for informational purposes only, unit updates. We got the service delivery update coming from Michael Brown. Did you already touch on that, Mike? I did. I morphed okay. them together. Mm -hmm. so then we're going to move to system development update from Patricia Harris Moorhead, please. Good afternoon. Um, our focus in system development, marketing, and communications uh, continues to be on the public information and customer information, uh, both for our internal customers as well as our external customers. As Mike mentioned, um, we are continuing to do the town halls, which um, are very uh, productive and good opportunities for all employees to ask any questions that are on their minds. Uh, we also uh, internally are still having the leadership calls uh, three times a week um, uh, that Mr. Brown facilitates. And so that is also helping us with internal communications. And for external uh, 
communications. Um, as you all are aware, we are continuing to send out uh, news releases, media advisories, and do social media updates. Uh, we sent out a news release uh, regarding the, um, the, the uh, Water Ferry grant um, that Mr. Brown uh, mentioned. We also sent out uh, news releases and media advisories regarding ramping up services uh, that were effective on the 15th uh, to get our customers ready for the, uh, the ramped up services. And in addition, we've been working on uh, special signage, which is included in your board report. Uh, we are trying to encourage customers to spread out on our buses. And so we created new bus seat signs um, that basically state, do not sit here, uh, please uh, practice social distancing. Uh, we also have uh, blown up some of those signs and uh, posted them at IETC uh, to remind customers about social distancing and other uh, precautions that they can take as they are out in public. Uh, we are encouraging our customers to wear masks. We are not mandating them, but we have put that message out um, as well as uh, signage and uh, media advisories and flyers uh, out to our customers. And we are trying to get back to the new normal. Uh, which is uh, which is why we wanted to recognize our students this morning uh, with the Poetry in Motion uh, program. Um, I have heard from several of our board members, um, it's specifically uh, uh, Commissioner O'Dell, uh, Dr. Robinson, and Mr. Cody, that we need to get young people more involved with transit services. And so this uh, initiative, the Poetry in Motion program, that was um, an opportunity for us to expand our footprint with the younger generation in our community. Um, of course, we do participate in other activities uh, such as the uh, Commissioner's Youth Council. Um, um, that agency, uh, when those students are appointed, they usually, um, we usually send over bus passes to them. And one of their first projects um, is usually to kind of ride our system to kind of figure out how our transportation services run. So we will continue to reach out to that demographic. Uh, later this week, I will share with all of you all our preliminary marketing, communications, and outreach plan. Uh, our stakeholder relations committee members have copies of that and are reviewing it. Uh, but at next month's board meeting, we want to present it to the entire board do a short summary for you all, um, but we have completed that project as well. That about concludes my report. I'm open for any questions that you might have. Um, uh, two, two point of references, and I'm just, Patricia, that was brought to me, and, I, and I'm just gonna be, uh, I guess, a floorboard conversation when it comes to us as an agency within this community. We service a community here in Chatham County at 40% African-American, and nothing was referenced to June 19th or Juneteenth and nothing was referenced to, I guess, Black Lives Matter movements or anything like that. And I'm not saying we should take a stand on it or anything like that. However, a conversation should be brought to us um, in reference to a uh, reference to how we mitigate or how we handle those kind of things in our community. Number one. Number two, Flag Day was a couple of weeks ago. And I rode around and I had two two army people. My father don't really talk to me about Chatham Air Transit, but he was one of the people who taught me. He said, well, Y'all transit agency don't 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 celebrate Flag Day because and this is not on you, Patricia. I'm just bringing it up in this conversation. It's on the whole agency as a whole. But this is the I guess the department we would have these conversations at. Flag Day was not Flag Day was not um, acknowledged. And so what I want us to do is be more sensitive in our community, especially when we're coming trying to be a transit agency that wants to be for people. And when I say be sensitive as far as that's concerned, you know there are certain moments where we lower the flag. There are certain holidays we should be celebrating. We should be very sensitive to these kind of things that's transpiring in our community. And once again, Patricia, this ain't on you. It's just a matter of us as an agency as a whole, that we become more transparent and be involved in what's going on in our community. And I know for a fact with June 19th, and I don't know what we could have done as a celebratory thing from Chatham Area Transit, but that was an opportunity where we could have connected to the operators and, and not just the operators, but those people who we serve in our community. Once again, when I ride the bus, it's mostly us. And when I say us, I'm African-American because I can speak in that candid conversation. But those are the kind of things that I would like to see because that is the that is majority of our ridership, especially 
with us not having that that um that dot going on right now where we will get into our other um ridership numbers and so i just want to make sure i put that out there as a platform piece anybody else can echo whatever they want to put out there mention or anything like that and i turn the floor over to the floor anybody got a question or comment they want to add to that narrative Mr. Jones, I agree with you. And it's not about taking a side, it's about acknowledging that as a corporation, we recognize, you know, because you look at, when you look industry wide and in transit industry, several transit agencies had little, you know, things up on their buses and not, just, just acknowledging that it exists. You know, the companies pledging money, you know, the time we live in now as it's a, a, a solid piece of this community. I think, again, we need to be a little bit more sensitive. Anybody else got anything to add to that narrative? Yeah, I'd add the, uh, you know, just the makeup and the demographics of the city are, are, are less important for me. I think it's got more to do with just like public transit's history in America and, and, and it's spotted, you know, the spotted story that we've had, I think would be a really interesting opportunity for us to, to, to bring that forward and to, I think, as Dr. Robinson put it, to recognize it and and it does i think again to sort of telling the story of cat you know and possibly telling the story of public transit in general um just gives people more of a a way to to understand it and and uh and see us as a public utility i think that's a great idea patricia you have anything to add to the narrative i'm uh, I definitely understand uh, where you all are coming from. When we send out the communications, marketing, and outreach plan to the entire board members, um, there's a section under outreach where we do list some of the special events, special holidays that we're thinking about doing something special to kind of acknowledge. And so that would be an opportunity where we can easily add in, um, you know, June 10th um, in other ideas or activities. Um, we also probably need to revisit our advertising policy so that we all can kind of look at that and kind of make a decision, especially in light of our new CEO coming on board, so that we can all be on the same page about the different activities. But like I said, the draft that we're going to send out for the communications, marketing, and outreach plan is still a preliminary draft. and. Uh, and under the outreach section, we do have several community events listed. And we can always add to those so that we can plan and uh, do a better job next year. Okay. So thank you all for sharing that with us. Thank you, Ms. Patricia. Another thing I did not get to mention, um, Dr. Robbins, I see you got something to say, but I just want to say another thing I did um, that the poetry emotion, um, I'm just, it's been on my heart and I really was going to keep it suppressed and not really talk about it. But I understand that it was part of a, a committee that Poetry in Motion was really pushed. However, Dr. Robinson would tell you, Dietrich Legger would tell you, Tabitha, Commissioner Odell would tell you, I have a strong passion when it comes to kids. And it was never segued an opportunity for me to be involved in that whole Poetry in Motion. It was kind of kept over here in the corner. And, and whenever we're talking about kids, I don't think we need to segue ourselves by board members and committee. I think it should have been an opportunity where we all had the opportunity to be involved in that. And I never, and if I'm if I'm wrong, call me out, but I never got an invitation from beginning to end as far as being a part of that whole buildup or being involved in that whole process. And I and I think it was a great thing we do. Dr. Robbins would tell you, I work with all kinds of kids when it comes to poetry, when it comes to all that kind of stuff, but I really wasn't involved in that piece right there because I never saw the opportunity as a board member to be involved in that. And I felt it should have been an invitation for me to be involved into that without me having to force my way into that whole piece right there. So I did want to make sure I segue that point and component right there because I got, and I keep Dr. alluding to Dr. Robinson because Dr. Robinson and, and, Tab, and Commissioner Odell knows this too. I have a affinity of passion for young people and getting them on board on these kind of things. So when we do any kind of activity, whether it be um, from that committee, my committee, Dr. Robinson's committee, any committee, we still make sure that we entertain other board members into the discussion so we can make sure that everybody is a part of this whole process. And I just want to make sure I gave that narrative. Dr. Robinson had a question after that. I just want to say, 
I was just going to say, we'll definitely keep that in mind. Uh, we were trying to share information like through the governance committee with our chair, but we will definitely keep that in mind and extend invitations to members to participate in more of our activities. I think really what, um, you know, COVID-19 kind of caused all kind of delays in, in, in challenges, you know, for our marketing efforts for the spring but when you see our communications and marketing plan you'll see that we're trying to lay out campaigns activities for year one year two uh, like what we're working on right now is you know we have to um, work on a campaign to show the public that it's okay to ride public transit uh, systems all across the country are going to, going to be facing the challenge of getting people to come back to public transit. So that's our next focus um, as we try to get back to this new normal. But thank you for sharing all of that with me. And, and Patricia, what, one thing I want to allude to is I want us to understand that, yes, we have committees, but just because we have committees doesn't mean we have an opinion from other board members. And I think that's my main piece that I really want to push out there that we include, don't get so caught in the silo that we don't take uh, programming from other areas to make sure we build what basis we need to do in our program. Um, and I gotcha. appreciate your commentary on that. Dr. Robinson, it's on you. And I just want to suggest that if Mrs. Um, Patricia wanted to send a copy of the policy to the Performing Monitoring Audit Committee, I'd be glad to take a look at it, start reading through it, and, um, you know, and offer suggestions if you'd like to do that. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we'll do that. Because uh, I think it was approved right before I came, no, right after I came on board, like in March 2018. And so, um, you know, we just need to take a look at that. All right. And when, when are we going, when are we going to go into a deep dive as far as this marketing plan is concerned? We're planning to um, show you, we're planning to share, do a presentation at the July board meeting. Uh, we've been talking about it in our committee meetings for last few months. We had a really good draft that we um, sent to Mr. Clinton and Commissioner uh, O'Dell to kind of get feedback from. And so we have finessed it. And so um, we did share updates with them uh, earlier this month. And I wanted to wait after this meeting and then send it to the entire board so that you all can look at it. You'll have like 30 days to review it, give us input. And then we'll just do like a summary of the highlights of it at the July board meeting. All right. So and that's the plan. Anything else, Dr. Robinson? All right, Mike, Dr. Mike, do you have something? Yeah. Um, um... Sad to hear that your father, a veteran like my dad, was upset about our flag day. Uh, I don't know what we could have done or should have done. I thought we kind of did the same thing every year, but that does bother me that a veteran was upset about it. So we should plan on something maybe better for the future. And, and, and when I say that, Dr. Holleran, I didn't say that in disrespect or anything because I don't know if we if we've done it in the past or if it's something we customarily we do. And and so that would be a question I would ask board. I'm not, I guess not board members, but people who work at Chatham Area Transit. And those kind of those kind of things we need to make sure that we're keeping sensitive. About. And and mind, mind you, we can't be sensitive sensitive to everything that's that's taken advantage of. But there's certain things like a flag day. And from what I heard, you know, I and I went and I talked talk to the county, and the county had the flags half staff. You know, the city had it. And, you know, and I talked to all my different elected officials. So everybody across the board had it, but we didn't have it. And that, that was the reason why I brought that point up. Okay, because I never heard of half flag or half staff on the flag. I just thought we all put them out. But yeah, well, apparently I guess we, we, did, we did it wrong. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, and the only other thing that I, I really want to bring up, if nobody else has anything else, um, Dietrich, Cody, do you have something? No, we good. good. All right. Um, um, Clinton, you have something? Okay. Commissioner Odell, did you have something? No. All right. Commissioner Stone, did you have something? No. All right. Uh, Alderman Leggett, did you have something for me? He's trying, y'all. He's trying. 
All right, well, if he doesn't have anything, the other thing is when we're going to get this presentation, we're well into hurricane season. Well, when are we going to get this hurricane plan? Uh, we can have, uh, I can circle back with Erica. I know we, we have a hurricane plan. We have a, a, an emergency um, um, plan. Uh, we can make that available to everyone. You would you would like would you like a presentation at the next board meeting? You would, is that what you're looking for? I would like a presentation. Like if it can, we can email that presentation now, and then we can talk about it at the next board meeting. But I think okay. the presentation we're past that point because April first, I believe, is the um, hurricane season starts. Yeah, June first. So yeah. It really doesn't really affect us on our side till late July, August, September. So, um, okay. but I would like to see what the hurricane plan looks like. Um, I yes. know the reason why I want to see it because I got, I guess I got previous plans or something like that. I got county plans, and I would see would like to see what kind of updates we have every year. We should update it based on what we go term wise. So that was something I want to see. Okay, all we right. will provide it. All right, um, Commissioner Stone, you had something because you got your speak on. No, nope. Commissioner Jones. Yes, sir. Did you like it? Did you have something for me, Robert? Yes. In terms of uh, hurricane preparation, uh, I understand now we're dealing with the curve of covert. We're, uh, we're, we're going to drop numbers of people that we're going to send to other places because I know the city of Savannah is speaking with other municipalities to see if we can send people to them if we had to evacuate. So uh, are we going to be making that part of our presentation also? All right. What we what we can do is we can discuss it in um I guess that'll be discussed in I guess my meeting. We can make sure that's a point we can discuss. Uh Commissioner Stone, could you remind me just in case I forget? Yes. Because I, I depend on you harder than um than everybody else. Dietrich, you can help me out too, brother. All right. Um with that being said, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, well, then, um, with that being said, uh, we'll go into the finance update. Before we do that, you might want Sir? to get a quick update from Erica about that plan since it's going to be not till the board for another month since she actually did the plan. I asked for I I asked for Michael Brown if he can email it to us, and then we can discuss it at next month meeting. Now, if y'all want to have a, a talk about it right now, we can. But uh, if if Mike, if Mike can instruct Erica just to email it to us for now, and I can play the email for now for the next 30 days. Um, I mean, I didn't hear anybody overtly get into conversation of it. And I'm sure if Dietrich gets it, Dietrich will add his component, and me, Commissioner Odell, and Commissioner Stone will add our components as far as the county is concerned. Hey, this is Erica. I mean, I, I'm I'm happy to speak to that, of course. Our our plan's updated every year, and actually, Ms. Beverly asked me for a hard copy of it last week or week before, so she's got that. It's also always available internally on our employee S drive, and I'm certainly happy to do a presentation or chat with y'all back and forth whenever over the next 30 days um, or, or whenever okay. you're ready. That works for me. Erica, make sure, can you do me a favor when you put this plan out here? Can you highlight I guess the COVID-19 would be probably probably the highlights and any constructive changes that were made from, I guess, previous years to this year. That would yes, be the main sir. thing I would be looking for. Yes, sir. And, and as I've mentioned on some of our calls uh, recently, we've been already speaking with our partners at SEMA, how that would change the face of evacuations with COVID present. Um, and they're obviously uh, responsible for managing that throughout the county and the city, but Briefly, what we've discussed, how it would affect CAT, is that we would still have to do 50% um, capacity on the bus um, and social distancing and, and continue rear door boarding. Um, and some other options we've discussed with SEMA is that one of the problems they have at the evacuation assembly areas is people show up uh, before the civic centers open and they line up outside. So that kind of causes some congestion with the registration process. So what we what we discussed doing was starting our routes later when the EAA opens, just so we're not dropping off huge crowds of people while they're still registering. So those are just some of the minor things we've talked about adjusting and uh, we're continuing conversations with them moving forward. All right, thank you. Y'all have any questions? Uh, thanks, Erica. I, I know we're already on our fourth name storm, so we're way ahead on, unfortunately, on hurricane season. Yes, sir. 
All right, thank y'all for the commentary. We're gonna move forward. Terry Harrison, you are up on the call. Fi financial update, please, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. The last unit update of the meeting. So the financial update is in your package. A quick highlight on um, May's revenue and expenditures. As you would expect, you can see our revenues down $390,000, mainly driven by the City of Savannah's shuttle suspension and our fare free hazard mitigation measure. The good news is that through cost containments in other expenditure accounts, we cut that bottom line loss to less than 100,000. So year to date, we're still showing right at a million dollars better than budget. I did notice this morning that I inadvertently uploaded two revenues and expenditures. So you're missing your projected income statement. I'll forward that to the board. And the news is good there with us losing about 350 to 450 every month with no fares and no other revenue from our agency fees. It looks like um, our year end numbers will hold and the projection is showing an $850,000 bottom line associated with operating before you roll in the capital revenue net of depreciation impact. So I'll be happy to answer any questions anyone may have. Harry, have we submitted anything to uh, the reimbursement from the federal government? Waiting on execution. Waiting on execution, Dr. O, and then we'll be able to request within 72 hours every cost for the month that the months that have occurred before that. Okay, and quoting uh, John McKay from Tampa Bay, I'm all in favor of execution. <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> you won't hear when that happens. I will jump uh, up and down and scream it from the rooftops. It's not often that that amount of cash is provided to assist us with what we do. I'm very excited about that. Ms. Terry, would you explain execution for me? What do you mean by waiting on execution? Sure, so outside of the standard um, award notification that you get, like in the paper from DC or Region 4, there's a software system in TRAMS where you have to go in and enter the details of each funding opportunity. Then it works itself through Region 4's review. They send some pieces of it to the Department of Labor um, in DC. Our union weighs in, it comes back, they review it again in Atlanta at Region 4, and then they give final approval and execute, which is when we get the dollars, when we get the cash. So that same process will be in place for the CARES Act? For all, yes, yes, for all, yes. Okay. And but how long does that normally take, time-wise? It, it varies, but Region 4 is working on expediting this type of funding. It has happened in four to five months quickly, and it's taken over a year in other grant funding opportunities, depending on the grant, depending on the complexities, some of our capital programs have environmental findings and um, environmental protection agency mitigation measures that delay it, but we expect this one to be very quickly based on what we're hearing from Region 4. We'll have this cash in the bank before Labor Day is, is my thought. Are there any other questions or discussion? Any other questions or discussion? All right, appreciate Ms. Terry Harrison. All right, at this time, we will call for an executive session. We still need a, an executive session uh, uh, for personnel. So we wanna go into executive session for personnel. Beverly, we need an executive session for personnel. Yes, sir. Do we need to vote, Vice Chairman, to close the open meeting? I, I didn't think we did, but um, can I get a motion for us to move into executive session? So I make a motion to move. Helen, uh, uh, Helen moved, I'll second. Commissioner Stone has moved it and Commissioner Odell has seconded. 
Uh, all in order, go ahead and call for quick call for the um vote. Yes, sir. Dada O'Halloran. Yes. Mr. Cody. Yes. Mr. Amister. Mr. Leggett. I think his mic is off. His mic is not working. It is. Okay. Thank you. Mr. LeCackins? Yes. Dr. Robinson? Yes. Let's just say Dr. Robinson? She said yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Stone? Yes. Ms. O'Dell? If you want to double back, yes. Clinton. And Mr. Emmister, we're voting to go into an executive session. I approve. Thank you. Vice right, Chairman, we are good. We don't have Mr. Alderman. I, I, I say yes, too. Thank you. I'm sorry. I skipped over you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yes. All right. You can stay on this line, and I'll go ahead and start dismissing the other callers. <laughs> Okay, I'm not sure who TS is. So I'm going to Butler, I need to identify you as one of the callers. Do you mind speaking again? He's identified. You got two of them. I know. I was trying to get. Thank you. I was trying to get rid of one of them. Just. Erica is still on the call. Thank you. Okay, going down the list, we have Mr. Emerson, Mr. Cody, Alderman Leggett, Dr. Robinson, Commissioner Stone, Commissioner Jones, Dr. Hellron, Commissioner O'Dell, and Mr. Butler. And you got Pete Lukakis in behind you. And Mr. Lukakis present, yes. Um, Mr. Butler? Hey, I think I'm going to need to log in from my phone, too, because this thing looks like it's about to die. Okay, I'm going to unlock the meeting. I need to verify that this is, oh, here's, here's Mr. Butler, one moment. Oh, where's, the, where's the thing at? Crap. What thing? What are you looking for, Tab? The link. Okay, hold on. Beverly, can you see me? I see you, Tab. I see you, Tab. Okay, so okay. I'm going to leave from here. Did that work? Yes, we hear you. Okay. Okay, and that was Mr. Butler. He's going to dial back in. I had him locked out, but I just unlocked the meeting. Ms. Odell, we don't see you. Is that okay? She, she's uh, on I'm, I'm working on it. I'm trying to get it done. Beverly, you should stop recording. Thank you. Okay, can you see me now? Yeah, we see yes, you, too. This conference will now be recorded. Vice right, Chairman Jones, we are out of um, executive session into open session now at 2.09. I'm going to give it about two minutes and I'll, I'll okay. make it.
send an email. All right, um, um, main thing I'm waiting on is, um, main person I'm waiting on is um, Terry Harrison and Michael, Hall, Michael Brown. Um, we're going to old business. We're going to be talking about something dealing with accounting policy, uh, policy and procedure revision. Yes, right. Yeah. All right. Just want to make sure this announcement is known. Uh, two minute mark is here. The, the announcement is known that we are coming out of executive session, nothing was voted on uh, and nothing was brought up for consideration as far as what needs to happen within Ch Chatham Area Transit. Uh, Well, Wesley needs to go pay attention. Tell her what you were just doing. Commissioner Stone, if you mute yourself, thank you. Not really, did Pete leave? Yes, sir. So you should note that he's left before the meeting was finished. I did, yes, sir. And Clinton, Clinton had to get off the call at two. I think you saw that in the in the um in the chat. Yes. And who's going to give us an explanation on the old business, Beverly? On the old business, um, Ms. Terry should have uh, the details on that. I do know the accounting policies came in um, yesterday evening. I forwarded over to the board this morning. It is the red line version of the accounting policy and procedure. I don't know what's her timeline for the board to review it before it comes before the board, back to the board for approval. I sent the email, so I am expecting for her and Mr. Brown to join along with Ms. Patricia. I see well, Ms. Patricia. Ms. Patricia is already on the call. Yes. Commissioner Jones, um, Mr. Brown is logging in, and then Ms. Terry should be right behind them. All right, thank you. Thank you. Beverly, could you, I'm about to go. I'm, I'm gonna go um, for two, two seconds and um, just just make the announcement when they come on. Yes, sir. Okay.
Hey, Mr. Brown. Hey, Beverly. Hi, Patricia. I can't see who else. Hey. Vice Chairman Jones just got to leave. Commissioner Mills driving now. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Mr. All right, everybody, I'm back. Um, now Beverly didn't walk away. Um, well, we're going ahead into old business. I'm gonna go ahead and make the announcement again. Ty, you still on here? We came out of executive session. Nothing was. Are we recording? On. Yes, we you are. Gotta recording. Wait till we're recording. Okay. She, she started recording once we got out, so she's, she's about five minutes recording right now. Um, okay. Nothing was. Nothing was voted on in executive session. We did have a good discussion. And um, we're moving forward as far as our agenda is concerned. All right, with old business, accounting policy and procedure revisions, um, red line transmitted, transmittals. Um, is Terry going to take that or is Mike going to take that? Uh, I think Terry's going to take that one. Okay. Okay, good. Um, so this is the third and last policy revision that was developed back in October. Um, at that time, the governance committee had asked us to walk them through one at a time. So staff has modified the draft and the control log to include a red line version, transmitting that document to the board today to allow um, sufficient time for review. Once the review is completed and with board direction, we can propose an approval on a future board agenda. Thank you. Um, are there any questions to that? Any questions? All right, thank you, um, Terry. As far as new business concern, governance calendar, FY 2021, I was under, under the impression that we had to make some changes on some dates or something like that, Beverly? Mike? Uh, let's see. Beverly, is this, do we need to make some changes? Is, is there some conflicts on dates? I can check right now. Um, okay. The only changes that were made was um, for November and December, we moved the committee meetings, well, we moved the governance meeting and the regular board meeting up by one week in observance of Thanksgiving and the Christmas holidays. All right, so it was brought, it was put on new business for? For board acceptance to see if there was any conflicts with, with among the members of the board. With the dates that are set and is there any specific date to change that we want to look at or it was just a set calendar we went solely by the first tuesday for regular committee third tuesday for governance and fourth tuesday for regular board meetings and so second tuesday is still open for any kind of flex if we need it yes sir all right and we have any workshops scheduled or anything for the second half not at the time it's to be announced Okay. Yes. Any uh, any other questions in reference to that as far as new business is concerned? All right. Uh, the the last item, is there any items we want to add as far as new business? No, but I think we have to approve that schedule. All right. And I get a motion to approve the schedule. So moved. That was Second. Dr. Robinson moved it and Commissioner Stone seconded. Uh, can we do a roll call vote? Yes, sir. And I, I say aye. Okay, thank you, Vice Chairman Jones. Dr. O'Halloran? Yes. Mr. Cody? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Emerson? Um, he had to leave at two. Okay. Mr. Yes. Mr. Lakakis, not present. Dr. Robinson? Yes. This Ms. Stone? Yes. Ms. Odell? Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Thank you. 
All right. I see you, Dr. Robinson. Go ahead. I was just wondering, under new business, you mentioned early on about having to elect a new CEO. Did we do this it's at another? Not, I mean, I'm sorry. Off, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Commissioner Chair. I mean, <laughs> but Dr. Robinson, first off, Dr. The, the, um, can we acknowledge the motion carried on that with the calendar? Yes, sir. You sure may. Everything carried um, with the calendar. Dr. Mm -hmm. Robinson, at any time, yes. if you want to add any item to the new business agenda, that that what I spoke of earlier is because we had a vac we had a vacate of office within the executive office, which means the chairman resigned. Um, that that resi that resignation is documented. Um, we'll forward that to Ms. Beverly Dumas, so it could be put under in, in the records as far as his, his uh, resignation is concerned. With his resignation, that automatically puts the vice chair into the chairman's position. But I'm only here on a temporal basis. Now, we can we can make a decision if we want to vote on a new vice chair right now, or we can table the discussion till the next meeting. And we cannot say that we have to have a vice chair because um, two years ago, we were in the same situation where we had a chair and we did not have a vice chair for almost two and a half months. So it is it is perfect to us to be able to do what we have to do. Um, I can remain in the vice I, I can remain in the chair position temporary until we have discussion amongst ourselves to determine who we want to move forward as far as the chairman is concerned. And then I can roll back into my vice chairman position or move however you want to do it. But that's privy up to the board if we want to move into that discussion. But but you staying does not require a vote. That's just automatic. Ma'am. You you staying. In temporary. Uh, the vice no. chairman automatically, by Robert Rules of Order, the vice chairman automatically assumes upon resignation the position okay. of the chairman. Okay. I, I have a I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um it was it was brought up at some point in time that by the county commission chairman that he um felt like by reading the law that the that a, a commissioner could not be chairman of Chatham area transit. So I to think answer, that to answer, to answer let, let me, let me, may I finish well, please? I, I, I'm I would let you, go ahead. Okay. Um so I think that that would cause us to go ahead and elect a chairman as soon as humanly possible because spoke, um I, that was made very clear to me. I spoke to I spoke to Chairman Scott this morning. That's what I was trying to tell you. I spoke to Chairman Scott this morning, and as long as I'm in a temporal space, it's fine. But I just don't need to live in the space. But if understand, you can call him right I understand. I call him first thing this morning to, to let him know that Michael Holleran had resigned and I would be in this position. And I said, Do you have a problem? He says, As long as I'm not, I'm not voted on as that person, I can sit in the position as a temporal person, temporary. I understand. I just bring that up for, for fact. Yes, yes, ma'am. I, I, and that's why I, I wasn't trying to cut you off. I was trying to let you know I'd already talked to him about it. That's, I, I wasn't trying to cut you off. I understand. Okay. Is there any other commentary to that? I just have a question for Ty. I remember when Howard resigned, didn't we have to vote me in as chairman? Uh, yes, you did. Uh, and I don't want to prolong this meeting. Uh, you can do it today or you can uh, with a number of steps you would have to uh, go through, or you can schedule it on the agenda for the next regular meeting. Uh, Thank you. So you you you're going to need to uh, to um, to vote on uh, electing a chairman um, uh, sooner rather than later. But it's not. But per Robert Rules of Order, it's not mandated that it happens because I automatically assume the position in an interim state. Well, that may be true for for a limited period of time. It should not go on in a prolonged era. And I agree with you. And I will not accept it past a long elongated area. But I think that because we res the resignation was yesterday, I think board members need to digest and de decide who is the person we just without impulse voting on that position. And I don't mind staying in the position as a temporal base until we can come up to some kind of collusion. I agree. Uh, we should set next month as the vote. I mean that 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 
that's fine when we set the agenda that would be something we would we would take into consideration sir no i think we should vote on it actually uh, well that's upon motion. the board to make that just like just like there have been several things that we've said when when the previous chair was in play that we should have felt the done that would be taken in consideration and when that time comes i mean i have no problem considering that and not putting that on the agenda I would still prefer a vote, and I'd like to call for a vote that we definitely vote for the new chairman next meeting. I think a month should be enough time for people to decide. All right. May I say? May I say that, Dr. Allen, you can you can certainly suggest and strongly suggest that that be put on the agenda for the next meeting, but it's actually the chairman's or acting chairman's prerogative to set the agenda. I appreciate that, Ty, because I was going to say that if anybody accepted the promotion. Thank you, Ty. Just I, I took, that didn't happen fellow, when I got voted in. To my fellow board members, I have no intention to be in the chairman of Chattanooga Transit. I have expressed that thoroughly. And when the time comes, we will make sure that decision is made. And I, I but I'm not, I'm, I'm, I don't know what's going to happen in 30 days to say this is what's going to happen. But I do not have any intentions of being the chairman of Chatham Mary Transit. Without a second motion, uh, can I get a move for adjournment? So move. Second. second. Appreciate I that. second. I appreciate second. that. Meeting call. The meeting call. Thank you. Right, Thank you. Have a good one. I don't like it out. Beverly has to get us out because I think she's got us locked or something. No, you didn't leave. Yes. <laughs>